Good, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. Welcome, Welcome to Huntley International, International Speedway. It's the final night of the 2023 New Zealand Superstock Championship brought to you by Pollock Cranes. Myself, Stu Russell, will be in the pits giving you a bit of an update and damage reports on the top 26. We've got Bianchi here as well. Gabe, up in the top, we've got Craig, Paul Hickey and Bear Brown. So you've got a fair few of us to talk your ears off all night. And uh, welcome to those obviously watching on the Pit TV live stream. But Mate, we are here for finals night. We've got our top 24 cars parked on the infield. We've got some legends of Huntley Speedway cars parked out there, including the uh, most recent, I guess, Huntley uh, New Zealand champion, Jared Wade's car parked out there. And I can't wait to uh, find the next two qualifiers through the Ripper Charge, which will be happening around 6.30, where we've got 26 cars lining up in that to find the next two to join these top 24. But Bianca, awesome, nice sunny day. Great to be here for finals night. The, the cars, cars out here look in absolute pristine condition. A few uh, minor, minor dents, dents and, and, and stuff, stuff from last night, from, from, from probably from Teams Champs, champs as well, but it's, it's just great, great to finally have our top 24 and uh, add a couple more to it a bit later on. Yeah, 100%. It's actually nice that you join us, Stu. I hear that you're in Fiji with old uh, Keegan Levine, so it's nice that you made an appearance tonight. Hey, um, that's an inside joke. He was definitely not in Fiji. But listen, uh, up and down the pits last night, the cars were actually dropping like flies, which was really unusual, because these are some of our top guys. And um, you speak to them, and it's like, yeah, we missed a couple of things from teams. Um, I spoke to Ron Ty, who, of course, is always there, up there or thereabouts, and he said, yeah, we missed some steering problems. Poor old Jordan Deer had two DNFs with um, punches and he said yeah it just was damage that we've missed, we think that something's just out of line from team, so really surprising night but that has made way for all these newcomers who have never qualified for a New Zealand title and I'm probably more excited for them than I am anything else tonight. Oh, oh certainly are yeah, and like, like you mentioned you know Jordan Deer and Wayne Hemi, the Red Walker team, not even here tonight, yeah. you know, yeah. off already uh, with other arrangements. Uh, the Joblin's not making it through to the finals. Mm. I feel like they need to go back to racing with four Y bodies on the cars <laughs> because those new bodies have just been nothing but bad luck. Mm. And then Jordan, uh, sorry, Jaden Ward as well, you know, uh, flat, uh, flat tire in that first one, realises that the, the brakes are a bit more uh, temperamental than, uh, than he thought, ends up loading up, focusing on Battle of Stocks uh, for next week. But yep. uh, that's, uh, that's the brakes when you've got some big cars out of action. Dale Robertson as well was yep. one that was pretty much qualified until doing anything that last mm. heat. But Gabe, mate, how did you enjoy your, uh, well, was it your first, I'm guessing, first New Zealand champs at Huntley? Did you, did you come to that one where Joe Farron smoked them all, or did you see your first one? No, it was my first one pretty much since I think it was 2013-14 at Nelson. So it's been a while since I've been in New Zealand Super Sock Champs. Uh, absolutely loved it. These cars are going absolutely fast. Obviously, most people know me from the Super Saloons. These cars are pretty much Super Saloons with rails at the moment. That's how fast they're going around Pollock Cranes, Huntley International Speedway. So it was a good night last night. Caught a few people out, obviously the flat tyres, and as well trying to avoid the contact in corners number one and two. But we've got a good field of cars here, 24 at the moment. We've got a whole bunch lined up and ready to go for a rep charge with only two getting through so it's going to be helter skelter from 6.30 onwards. Yeah it certainly is and obviously like there'd be a fair few names being from Nelson there'd be a few names that you, you'd know but there's probably a handful of cars here in this finals that you would never have heard of until mm. you've seen them parked out here in the top 24 so far. Yeah, especially the 307 K car of Pickard. He really surprised me last night. I think the first heat, he started off grid 15, got about up to second position. Uh, Bex Bar, it's always good to see her um, up in the points, obviously being the first female qualified to make it e ever through to a New Zealand Superstock champs as well. you just got a whole list of them, yeah. I could probably name about 10 cars that didn't qualify, mm. um, that didn't make it through tonight. So it's going to be an uh, interesting night. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, and you must be pretty happy to have old... Uh uh, Brett Nichols, I always go to call him by his nickname, but uh, <laughs> not for TV, but Brett Nichols obviously out there, the 48 car, you know, he brought that uh, off, the, the, off uh, Dale Jr., you know, good to have him in the finals once again. Yeah, just hope he gets through the corners one and two. He's had uh, problems at New Zealand Champs. He can't qualify. He always usually does. Just ca doesn't usually make it through the first lap. So hopefully he gets through that. As well as got, got my old schoolmate as well, Alex Hill. He's in the rapid charge starting off grid position too. So hopefully we'll get a few more South Island boys uh, through there. Yeah, certainly. And obviously, Bianca, uh, a Wellington girl. You've got Richie Gaskin there. He's won everything there is to win in uh, stock cars. And Richie's one of those guys who, when he made the step to super stocks, uh, I think a lot of us thought big things of, mm. of Richard because mm. he's been one, two, three at every championship North, uh, North GP, New Zealand, the, uh, the old uh, stocks in paradise, mm. the teams, you know, won seven odd teams, sold with the young guns. 
hasn't quite reached it in the pinnacle of Superstock Racing despite being in it for a while now, but it's good to have a, a W car in the final for you. Yeah, it's our um, so solo W car, I've got to say, which is actually quite surprising. I think they bought a contingency of seven cars up, so I'm really, really surprised that only Richard has made it through. But listen, um, I mean, he's still in there with a good chance because it's anybody's luck, really, isn't it? Like um, Gabe was saying, we've got so many first qualifiers, you don't want the nerves to take over, but realistically they will, especially old Trent James down the end here, his car's parked down the end, 16 years old, 16, fresh out of a mini stock, unbelievable, how great is that? I mean his nerves, it doesn't even matter what he does now, his nerves are going to be so heightened, all he needs to do is finish a race and that'll probably make his year, and of course he's qualified, in, uh, sorry he won uh, the World 240s Tier 2, so he's automatically qualified for the final in the 240s next year, he's living the dream, 16 years 16 years old, we have to give him a big mention. Oh, we certainly will, and I can't wait to uh, catch up with Trent. Mm. Obviously, uh, just the two Palmy cars through to the final so far <laughs> for us. A couple of Mustangs there. Maddie Wise, who uh, joined us from Hawke's Bay at the uh, start of the... Well, via Wanganui, sorry, uh, at the start of the year, and obviously Bex making it through to the finals. And, but, I mean, if I go through the field, we could probably add another half a dozen or ten cars to that yeah. list when you look at uh, who's come from Palmy to join other tracks the last few years. Yep. Yeah, I mean, um, speaking of Palmy, I mean, we've got Daniel, one, the 172P, Daniel Burmeister. I always crucify his name, so I'm sorry if I got that wrong. Um, he, Burmy, Burmy, uh, he's starting from grid position six, I believe. So I spoke to him earlier on in the pits as well, and he's feeling really good about his grid position. So, you know, we've, we've got to give him a, a mention too, because just like old Richard Gaskin over the head there, he's always there or thereabouts. So, I mean, it's anybody's game. Yeah, definitely is. Yeah. We have got some drivers coming out very soon. Yeah. Somewhere. They'll be, out, they'll be out very soon. And we will grab some kids as well. They've got the kids with them to do the grid draws for this top 24, plus obviously the uh, add in the repercharge grid. So when they cross the line, Paul and Barry can tell you exactly where they're going to be starting heat one. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, wrap it up here quite quickly. And then uh, when they get out on the infield, we thought they'd basically following us yeah. out here. It turns out they aren't. Yeah. So I don't know where the drivers disappeared to, but either way, when they're back out here, we'll grab the 24 cars. They'll obviously do their parade lap and we'll, uh, we'll get some grid draws. Yeah, how exciting. Let's go. To the right. <laughs> See you soon. Well, a very good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, race fans. Welcome to Huntley International Speedway here for night two of the Pollock Cranes 2023 New Zealand Superstock Championships. Very shortly, we will be heading down to the infield. You can see on the infield, the drivers are gathering our top 24, along with a whole lot of lucky children who are going to be involved in the grid draw tonight. Uh, and, of course, uh, we'll cross to our commentary team who are down there on the infield as well. Paul Hickey, Craig Tonkin and Barry Brown in the commentary box across the course of this evening. And we'll be keeping you up to date with all those points and bits and pieces. The grid draw about to happen. Now, there is the spot in your race program. We will be able to write down all of those grid draws. We will be noting them down. Once it is all done, we will then run through it again for you in race numerical order, driver car numerical order, along with all three grids for their finals tonight. So if you just want to hold off noting them down in your program, we will then run through it after this is all done, confirming those grid positions right, in guys, race car numerical off, order. So very okay, shortly, we are off. about to head Ready down to onto off. the infield, and we take are going to kick close. things off. Uh, as we see all of those cars lined up, the drivers are there, the lucky kids who will help us with our grid draws, and we are about to ask everybody here at the Huntley International Speedway to please be upstanding for a singing and a performance of the New Zealand National Anthem. Kia ora whanau, e tu tato. please stand. E hoa a tua o nga i wi matura a ta fa karongona me aroha no a ki a hua ko te pai ki a tai to a ta fai mana a ki ti a mai a te aroa 
God of nations at thy feet. In the bonds of love we meet. Hear our voices we entreat. God defend our free land. God Pacific's triple star. From the shafts of strife and war, make her praises heard afar. God, defend New Zealand. Humbai to Paki Paki na Tamiriki. Thank you, Fano. And there you go. Thank you very much. We are getting closer and closer to uh, the night's festivities. Let's bring in Barry Brown for a quick comment while we wait to cross down to uh, the infield for the draws. Uh, Barry, here we go. Night two, New Zealand Superstock Championships for 2023, finally. Uh, it's looking good, isn't it? The weather's beautiful. Track's looking great. As soon as you get down to that final 26, everything steps up. Probably a couple of notches, really, doesn't it? Um, our groups last night getting down to about 15 or 16. Per race, that's quite a number of cars on track, but 26, man, I'm just looking forward. And because the uh, consolation racing had a couple of tiers with the same amount of cars, but we're going to be concentrating mainly on the uh, the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Championship, the grids, the results right through the uh, the 26 cars throughout the three heats tonight until we get to a winner. Mm, you just mentioned the uh, consolation races here, Barry. We have had just confirmation that there is no consolations uh, tonight. We are down to just the three tiers, just with, uh, obviously, the numbers dropped down last night to, what did we end up with, 113? 113, 113 to start with. Uh, And then we've obviously had a lot drop out uh, with uh, damage and some decisions to uh, not return on night two. So we are down to just those three tiers of super stock races tonight, along with uh, the support program uh, with the stock cars. Uh, but, yeah, the, the there's nothing like seeing 26 super stocks uh, sitting on that starting line to decide who's going to be New Zealand champion. Oh, and take off into turns one and two. And we saw so much trouble in that turns one and two last night and uh, pile-ups, cars up the wall. Asher <coughs> Reese just about got his uh, titled events turned Oof. upside down on the first lap of the first heat. Got down somehow, struggled back to a 10th place and uh, won a second and third heats and uh, still qualified OK in the group. But, yeah... That was them heading into those turns with 19 cars. That yes. extra seven makes makes a lot of difference. <laughs> it, it's a lot of extra weight pushing. It, it is, and and a lot of extra pressure too, because yeah. um, you know this is this is the real deal now. Like qualifying, yes, you, sometimes you just kind of tiptoe a little bit, uh, but tonight, yeah, there's there's that first corner push. Uh, but the New Zealand Championship is massive. And, yeah, we saw that last night, and tonight we are going to take it up a notch with this great looking lineup of race cars uh, with lady and gentlemen. How great to see Rebecca Barr making this finals field tonight. Oh, fantastic. Yep. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, certainly Graham Barr made this field a number of times. Never made the um, NZ1, but podium many times. Won uh, plenty of North Island titles and the likes. Was it three three years in a row with the three NZ for yes. Graham Barr? Yeah, mm. fe feeling a bit poor. Didn't want to get the car <laughs> re-signed written, so he made sure he came third three times in a row. But you couldn't do that if you tried, could you? No, you couldn't. Uh, but yeah, the, one of these drivers here, although we do have two more to join us uh, in the finals field, will be New Zealand champion for 2023. So uh, not far away from heading down. We'll have a catch up with the drivers, some quick interviews. Uh, with our team and then drawing of the marbles for the grid draws for the all-important finals tonight. Third time this event has been uh, held here, Barry, and, uh, you know, back in 98, uh, sorry, 99, it was Craig Boot who won it in the one-race final, Joe Farron winning it by a runoff in 2012. Um, and third time, uh, boy, it's it's going to go off tonight, I reckon. It is. It's, uh, it's got a... A mixture of experienced drivers, but a lot of uh, new young drivers mm. in there too, and uh, quite a few that will have uh, only qualified for the first, maybe second New Zealand title. So um, it's going to be interesting, but that's the thing now. The young kids are stepping straight into such good machinery mm -hmm. these days. So um, 
Yeah, there's not going to be any tailing Charlies uh, just rolling around waiting to be lapped, is there? No, all of these uh, drivers raced hard last night. And, you know, there were a few that, you know, there's been a bit of talk that some of them just snuck under the radar. And, and at the end of the day, that's all you need to do. In qualifying night, you don't need to go out and dominate a group. Um, you just need to sneak in there under the radar and, and they then make your big statement tonight. Right, let's head down onto the infield. It's time for our driver interviews and our marble draws over to you guys. Yeah, we've got Matt Pickard here, his first New Zealand Championships. Mate, how are you feeling coming into this one? Oh, I'm absolutely buzzing, eh? Obviously qualifying last night. The first day you started off pretty well. Grid 15 managed to make it up to second and then you just had to pretty much make that top six the rest of the night, eh? Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, two, the last two were pretty uh, average, but hey, we're here. What changes have you ma had to make to the car, if any, after that hard qualifying night? I had a massive push on in turns one and two, so I just loosened it up a bit and it was a bit better. Alrighty, we'll try to do your grid draw. We've got young Connor here. It's one of his first times here at Huntley International Speedway. He's absolutely loving it. So he's going to do the grid draw for Matt Pickard. So we'll get you over here, Connor. Just come over here. I think Matt was suggesting he wanted an inside grid draw, so we'll try to get him an inside grid draw. And he's picked the all-important grid number 25. So Matt Pickard off grid position number 25 for heat number one in the Pollock Crane New Zealand Superstock Championship. You've got to be happy with that one, don't you? Yeah, no, that's pretty stoked. <laughs> so Connor's a bit of good luck for you. Oh, it must be. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, there he is, the 307K car all the way from Stratford, representing Kiki, of course. It is the 307 of Matt Picard as we head over to Bianca, who's with the 77G. Thanks, mate. Cheers, man. Good luck, eh? Yeah, cheers. Man. Good job, eh? Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, everyone. We'll start that again, shall we? Um, I'm down here with 77G Sam Hughes. He's here with little old Asher. Now, we were just saying, um, when nobody could hear me, Sam, this is your first season in the Superstock. You're feeling a bit nervous about your uh, about what's going to happen tonight? No, I feel all right, eh? No nerves setting in. They might they might change once you uh, you uh, strip yourself in. But listen, this is little Asher. Now, Asher, what number do you reckon you're going to pull out of the bucket for Dad? 77. 77. Do you think you might pull out number one? No. No. Let's <laughs> she doesn't want Dad on pole. Here's the bucket here, sweetheart. How about you pull it out and we'll tell Dad what his grid position is? Good girl. Ooh, not bad. Grid number four. Oh, that's a good EA. How do you feel about that? Take your sash. That's all important. How do you feel about grid number four? Yeah, no, it'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, we'll leave you to it. We've got a whole lot of cars to get through down the line. I think old Gabe's down here next door. Who you got, Gabe? Yeah, I got the 19M car of Kira Remnant all the way from Mount Bonganui, mate. We talked to you last night. Obviously, a wee bit of a difficult track last night. How was it for you? No, it was a bit of a mixed bag, but um, yeah, I've done plenty of laps around here, so so I sort of knew where to go when we we seen a bit of slick or an extra bit of mud, so it was quite handy bit of bit of knowledge. But um, no, it was the same for everyone, so no, it was a good night. All righty, we'll get your grid draw all the way underway. We've got Charlie here that's going to do the dr grid draw for Kerry, so we'll get Charlie to put your hand in the bucket there. Try to get out a nice wee bracelet there for Kerry Remnant in the 19M car. It looks like Charlie's picked up grid position number 22. So a back grid draw for Kerry in the first one. You feeling good about that one? No, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully Charlie g brings you a bit of good luck as we head over there with Bianca. She's got the 66A of Randy Tarrant. I sure do. Randy T, you're no uh, stranger to this kind of pressure and this kind of carry-on. How are you feeling just now? Pretty hot and uh, a little bit nervous and going to quiet mode soon and yeah. switch on, yeah. Randy, I mean, it takes me as a surprise that you've actually said that you're nervous. So what does it actually make you nervous? Is it just waiting for that grid, waiting for your first race, you need to get it underway and done? Oh, the first corner pile-up. That's why I'm nervous, yeah. yeah. Hey, um, we've got Little Wold. What was your name, mate? Sam. 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 What position do you want to uh, get for Randy? I know he's a fan of number one. Do you reckon you can do that? Mm, yes. Yes, all right. Pop your hand in, sweetheart. Let's see what we can get. Oh, grid 14. That's not too bad, Randy. Are you happy with that? Big smile? Yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? Just get into it now. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, here representing A at the Pollock Cranes uh, New Zealand Superstocks at Huntley International Speedway. Wish you all the luck, Randy. We'll carry on down the line with Gabe. Yeah, we're here with the 75k car of Gavin Tunnifer. A wee bit of a 
a tough qualifying last night, but you made it through, obviously, in that runoff right at the end. Yeah, I did, mate. Um, I feel a bit sorry for old Shane. And that was, his was my old car, and he's a good bugger. And um, yeah, we had to do what we had to do. We got there in the end. Made hard work of it. Yeah, we've got Zach here, who's a massive Superstock fan. He's got the Bay Park Busters colours on anyway. But he's going to pick the uh, drawer out for you, so we'll get Zach to put his hand in the, the cookie time bucket. He's picking a good one there. It looks like he's got grid position number eight. You happy with that one? Oh, it is what it is, so um, it'll be pretty busy out there on the wall, so I need to get off it pretty quick. Well, good luck for tonight, man. As we head over to Bianca, she's got the 4-2-2 of Ashton over there. Hey, mate, we're here with Dylan Ashton. Dylan tried to escape the good old interview. I so had to chase him down halfway down the track. But, um, Dylan, this is your obviously your first uh, qualifications. You look really nervous, but you're in a group of uh, boys who I'm sure are going to look after you anyway. Yeah, no, nah, the nerves are there, but what's, what's being nervous going to be for you? So, no, nah, I'm pumped. I'm happy to be here. First ever New Zealand champs, and I've qualified, so... Yeah, no, nah, it's good to be here. If there was one person that you could talk to across this line that would uh, you would be happy to take advice from with then how to contain the nerves, what we're going to do, how to avoid the trouble, who would it be? All of them. <laughs> Look at them all. Like, yeah, you can't, everyone. yeah, you can't put a name to who you want to talk to. It's everyone's just as good as each other. So, yeah. no, nah, yeah, I'm pumped and ready to be, so. Well, listen, let's get your drawer um, underway. We've got little Mason here. He's going to draw it out for you. Pop your hand in the bucket, sweetheart, and we'll see what we can find. 20. 20. How do you feel about 20? That must make you take a little bit of stress away. No, that's good. Yeah, happy with that. Hey, at the end of the day, everyone's out there all together. And yeah, so I just got to point out my family just standing here. Everyone can see them waving. Um, yeah, wouldn't be here without them, eh? They do everything for me. So, nah, cool to finally give something back to them. So, yeah. Well, listen, we'll look for your supporters later on, but good luck, eh? Well done. Yeah, we are here with a 34P car, Rebecca Bay. You got, made it through in that last race, winning that heat. How'd you feel about that? Yeah, I was pretty stoked. I just wanted to finish the race, so to get a win, yeah, I was pretty stoked. Obviously, being the first female to ever qualify for New Zealand Championships, you've got to be proud of that. Yeah, for sure. I've been chasing this one for a while, so it's finally um, nice to be here. We'll get Stevie to uh, the young girl here to make the pick for you. Stevie, when she found out about this competition, actually wanted Rebecca Bay, so she's already brought a bit of luck with her. So hopefully the grid draw will be that, that just for her. As it looks like she's drawn grid position number 16 for heat number one. You happy with that? Yeah, it's all good. It is what it is. So, yeah, we'll just give it a good go and see what happens. Well, good luck with the rest of the night, eh, Rebecca? Sweet, thank you. As we head over to Bianca. Yeah, I'm here with uh, Mr Gaskin, man of the hour, the only sole survivor from Wellington. Um, listen, you probably look more nervous than anyone, not because of what's going to happen tonight, because I'm here interviewing you, but we'll get on to it straight away. We've got little Lachlan here. We're still looking for that elusive pole position. Lachlan, here's a bucket, hun. If you put your hand in there, we'll see what we can pull out for him, eh? <laughs> 17. How do you feel about that? That's not too bad. No, it's good. Happy with that? He's done well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Richard's happy, mate, so well done. We'll, we'll carry on down the line. We've got so many cars to get through. Who have we got next? Yeah, we've got the 147 car of Matt Nielsen all the way representing Kehiki. Matt, we talked to you last night. Got to be happy with the qualifying, didn't you? Yeah, stoke day. Um, not to be going through with a run uh, runoff, so got through on the, on the points. And as well, obviously... Trying to make th sure, you try, had to try and get through a lot of cars at that last part in that last race, but you made it through. Yeah, sort of pushed my way through and got sort of half a car length on the last lap, so I was very lucky. Righty, we'll get the young man here, obviously, to pick the name out of the cookie time bucket. Having a nice wee holiday all the way from Australia as well, so got to be a part of this New Zealand Superstock Championships, and he's picked grid position number 11 for Matt Nielsen. Got to be happy with that one. Yeah, it's pretty good, eh? I'm pretty stoked with that, so we'll go... Hopefully it gets you a bit of good luck there as we head over to Bianca. Yeah, I'm here with uh, Mr Hamilton, Jamie Hamilton, 9G. Hey, um, we're just talking really quickly, Jamie. This is the third time that you've qualified for New Zealand's, but you are absolutely no stranger to this kind of pressure, so I believe the nerves will be non-existent right about now. Yeah, no, they're pretty good at the moment. Just be good to get our grid draw and go from there, I guess. Listen, you probably were um, pretty lucky to, to get no damage last night. I came down and seen you and you were pretty, pr pretty relaxed about the whole thing where everyone was falling apart around you. What did you have to work on today to get the car ready? Uh, nothing major, just a few bent wheels. Like, I've seen a lot of people getting flat tyres and all that, so we just went through all our wheels and made sure we had good ones ready for tonight. And that was about it really, a bit of welding and nothing major. 
This is young Tilly here, Jamie. If she pulls good position one, is that going to be good for you? Um, not really, no. <laughs> I'd like to be a bit further back for the first one. <laughs> well, let's see what she can do. Tilly, sweat out if you want to pull a number out. <sighs> How about that, Jamie? Grid position number 21. Yeah, sweet. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Hey, we'll carry on down the line. Good job, Tilly. Well done. Yeah, we're here with a reigning defending 1NZ New Zealand champion, Asher. He's had this number on your car for a while. You don't want to give it up, though. Oh, definitely. If we've uh, got through to this point, we're definitely not going to give it up without a fight. And we've got young Eliza here, or Eliza here as well. She's going to do the grid draw for Asher, so hopefully you get a good number for her. Yeah, hopefully uh, it is what it is. We're happy to just uh, be here, and she's excited. I think she's been a fan of mine for a long time, so uh, proud to have her here. So as we do the grid draw... Young girl picking out, she's got a couple on her at the moment. There's a wee bit of a tangle with the bands at the moment, so we've picked one out and she's picked grid position number 12, you happy with that one? Oh hey, it's all the same for everyone, 12's 12, 1's 1, it is what it is. Well, there is the reigning defending one, is it Asheries, good luck for tonight man. Cheers, thank you. Hey, I'm right behind you Gabe, <laughs> I'm here with Elias Dyke. Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, how about that? We're here with Elias Dykes from Man. Everything's happening at your car, eh? <laughs> um, we've got little Ada down here as well. It's actually Ada's birthday, so everyone, happy birthday, Ada. Yeah, oh, she looks gorgeous. There you go. <laughs> hey, um, so like we were saying, this is the first time you've qualified for New Zealand's. Um, how are the nerves feeling right now? I mean, look, walking up and down the line, everyone's like, oh, yeah, it's not too bad, but I bet that's going to change. Oh, yeah, it'll change. At the moment, I'm just trying to soak it in. It's a pretty cool feeling, eh? Um, yeah, anything from me is a bonus. I'm just stoked to be here, uh, make the top 26. So, yeah, can't complain, and what happens is what happens if we balls it up and that is what it is. Yeah. And often they say that qualifying is actually the hard yards and this is just like it, like you say it is what it is. But hey we'll get this ball rolling. We'll just get little old Ada to um, draw. Darling the bucket's just behind you. If you can pull out a, a number. Thank you Hazel. Uh oh what's it going to be? Uh, <laughs> what have we got here Elias? Uh, we've got the cream of the crop grid 10 so yeah. yeah. Smile says it always. Happy about the group positions. Hey, we wish you the best of luck, mate. Um, first qualifications. I mean, it's all it's all go from here. Yep. Awesome. Go hard. Cheers. Right, here's the smoke. Yeah, it's working now. We've got the 46B car, Corinne Ryan. Happy to make it through qualifying after a tough first night? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, no, happy with the car. And, um, yeah, I was happy with uh, how, how everything went. So um, I'm just happy to be in the finals. So, oh, yeah, hungry for it. Nicole. Any changes you had to make, obviously, this morning? Um, nah, just the wash up. Um, got away pretty unscathed. So, um, nah, just the wash up. Um, massive thanks to the crew and everyone that have helped Aaron and um, Dad and all the boys and that. So, massive thanks. And um, yeah, now nah, it's here and ready to go. We'll get Young Cooper here. He's going to draw the number out of the bucket for you. Massive Superstock fan, Young Cooper is. Trying to get him a good grid draw. And we're just turning that around there. And he looks like off grid position number two. Quinn, you happy with that? Yeah, it's, it's a good, good place to start, so have to uh, yeah, not, not, not piss around. <laughs> <laughs> Righty, Quinn Ryan off grid number two as we head over to you, Banka. Yeah, mate, I'm down here with Brett Nichols, the only driver so far, so far, to come in from the South Island. Now, Brett, last time we talked, you were winning this uh, Superstock CMP down in Nelson, so let's hope that this little chat's going to give you a little bit of luck, eh? Yeah, for sure, yeah. No, um, yeah, it'd be good to see uh, Alex come through from the river charge and... Um, yeah, we just try our hardest and come from Nelson and, um, yeah, try our best. Yeah. I mean, you tried your best down in um, South, uh, sorry, Nelson as well and you came away with the wind. I remember the emotion because you had done it, so let's hope that you can uh, get on the podium again today because that would be a, another moment to relive forever, yeah? Yeah, that's right, yeah. No, I've had a, I've had a fair few goes in and qualifying and um, had a bit of bad luck along the road and, and we've had some good luck as well, but that's just Speedway and, um, yeah, I'll be giving it 110% for sure. Yeah. Who's your little mate here? What, num what number, if any, you could pick, would you like him to pick out for you? Um, something on the inside would be good, Eli. Okay, Eli, listen, this is a bucket here, sweetheart. Can you see that? If you pick it out and show Brett what number you picked out for him. What, what have we got here, Brett? Uh, number three, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I can see the smile. Hey, that's a good one. Um, well done, Eli. We're going to carry on down because we've got stool trying to find that...
elusive pole position. Take it away, Gabe. Yeah, we are trying to find the pole position. Potentially might go to the 16 B car, Brett Loveridge. First ever New Zealand Superstock Champions Championship, and it's the first time you've ever qualified. Got to be happy with that. Yeah, well, That's one great. from one is pretty good. Yeah. Stoked as, eh? Like, yeah, just over the moon and um, happy to be here. All right, we've got Olivia to do the grid draw for you. So, young Olivia, we'll just get you, put your hand in the cookie time bucket. Just trying to find that grid position number one, but hasn't picked it. It's grid position number 23. Got to be happy with that one. Hey, I'm happy to be on the grid. <laughs> and there he is, a 16B car, Brett Loveridge, as we head over all the way to Bianca, who's with the 81R of Damien Orr. Yeah, Damien, here we are again, chat, chat, chatting. We've got tra uh, Travis down here. He reckons he's going to do the entire interview, but we might just let... No, he's saying no now, eh? Hey, hey, yeah. Hey, um, Damien, how are you feeling, mate? This is, I mean, it's a hot day. You're good to go, but how's the nerves feeling? Uh, yeah, the nerves sort of left me about five or six years ago now, yeah. so it's just normal, but... Yeah, I'm ready to go and, and just happy to be in this top 26, really. We were talking last night about the calibre of racer that you're actually going to be racing against, and I mean, it's very high. We do have a few guys in here who have never actually qualified. This is their qualification, first qualification, but that doesn't mean that they uh, have any less skill than anybody else, right? No, that's right, and I, but I definitely know how they're feeling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and um, yeah, it soon comes back to you and you just fall into the groove and away you go. If you could give one piece of advice to these new qualifiers, what would it be? Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Strap up, hold on, eh? Hey, would let Travis take uh, take over the show now? Do you want to pick up uh, his number? We're still looking for Paul. What are you going to do if you, uh, Damien, if you have Paul? What have we got? It's got to be number one, surely. No, no, 26. 26, that means you're going to be right up the front somewhere along the night, though, eh? Yeah, that's all right, but 26 is good. Yeah, yeah. Just let it all happen in front of you, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we'll keep on moving, but well done. Righty, here we are here with the 198 M car of Mark Costello all the way from the Mount Monganui. You brought the sun with you? Yeah, yeah mate, no, I've shifted over to Rotorua now. So, um, yeah, we left the Mount last year, so we're back in Rotorua. As well, New Zealand Super Sock Championship. Got to be excited qualifying for this one. Yeah, we had a good night last night. Um, we played it pretty safe, to be fair, and had three good races and just, did, you know, did enough to what we needed to do. We've got young Maya here. Mark's also kitted her out in a nice wee 198 merchandise singlet as well. So we've got Maya. She's going to draw the bucket out of the hat. Still trying to find that elusive pole position of drawing Grit Quinn Ryan on the front row. And it's grid position number 24. So all down the back, you've got to be happy with that. Yeah, that's a good one to start off with. Um, but yeah, we'll just uh, wish everyone good luck and we'll see what happens. Righty, we'll head over to Bianca, who's with the 136 of Maddie Wise. Yeah, Maddie Wise, we are here we come, guys, another brand new qualifier here. Maddie, well, you're saying you're not nervous at all, but do you think that might change once you actually step into the car? No, I'll be fine. I'm pretty excited today. It's just a bit of a long wait until we get out there, but no, I can't wait. It's been a really long weekend for you guys, because you were here really early yesterday morning, and you've been here most of the day as well. Do you feel like it's just like, come on, let's get on with it? We, we need to get this done now. Uh, it was a bit like that in the sun, just trying to hide, hide away and yeah, drink some water and get, it, get going. Yeah. Uh, one word of advice, electrolytes mate, that'll help you recover well. This is Bianca, you, two Biancas. Hey um, Bianca, we're going to get you to uh, pull out, hopefully number one. It's got to come at some stage, come on, let's go. We found him, pole position. I think his nerves just really kicked in now. <laughs> no, that's all good. Happy Quinn Ryan's down there with a big smile on his face as well. He's finally found his grid partner, eh? Well done, Matty. We're going to let you soak that up. We're going to move on down the line. We'll let him uh, cool down a bit. Thanks, Bianca. Yeah, righty, we are here with the 4K of Chad Ace. Uh, tough night qualifying, obviously about 18, 19 cars in your gr group, but you made it through. Yeah, yeah, we got the job done. Um, yeah, it was sort of just drive to five out there, keep the wheels straight, um, keep out of trouble, and you yeah, sort of, yeah, got through with it. Righty, we've got young Daytona here. Who's going to do the grid draw? You don't have to, you don't have any worries on you. You don't have to pick from the front row or one or two. So, no, got an inside grid draw. I think there, grid position 19. You've got to be happy with that. Yeah, that's that's about right. I'm happy with that. <laughs> right, there he is, the 4K of Chad Ace as we head over to Bianca, who's got the 56V. Yeah, I am. Here I am. I was just talking about you, Trent James. Uh, 16 years old. You're in a high calibre of driver here, mate, but, I mean, they're all smiling at you. They're probably just as proud as you for qualifying at your age and first year in a super than what your mum and dad are. Yeah, it's pretty unreal to be here with, in the top tier of all these cars, but, yeah, we'll just see how we go. <laughs> 
see how you go. Can you tell me when you found out that you did qualify last night? We'll keep it PC, but uh, how was the emotion? What were you thinking? Oh, I was stoked. I thought I was out of it going into the last race. So I went in eighth on points, I think, and then I went to go grid up and found out I had no brake pedal at all. So, you know, it wasn't looking in my favour, but we just managed to keep it clean and keep it up the front and, yeah, managed to get here. Amazing job. Hey, listen, we're going to let little guy over here pick out your number. One and two are gone, so you're pretty safe there. I have a feeling you might be starting about mid-pack. Let's see. What have we got here? Greg Seven, how do you feel about that? Oh, a little, a little bit further forward than I was hoping, but we'll be right, eh? It's all right, you'll start off the back at some stage, mate. But hey, put it there, I'm really, really proud of you. Good, good, good boy. Good boy, that sounds so stupid to say. 16-year-old, well done. Go hard. Righty, we are here with the 10G multiple-time New Zealand Superstock champion, Peter. He's got to be happy with qualifying last night. Yeah, yeah, my age, I, um, I'm very happy. Car looking very fast last night, just had to make it through qualifying. Drive to the conditions. Righty, we've got young Grayson here, who's going to do the grid draw out of the cookie time bucket. Even got some Rees merchandise on him as well. And it looks like he's picked out grid position number six. So Pete, you've got to be happy with a f uh, near the front row start. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool actually. Yeah, yeah. And the track's looking good tonight, so uh, hopefully we can benefit from that six. Alrighty, good luck for tonight, eh man? Thank you. Well there is a 10G of uh, Peter Rees as we head to the 5G of Josh Prentice. Yeah, I promise this, this was not a setup. Josh, mate, the car looks mint. We've probably had more comments about how good it looked on the stream last night than anything. I think people were just expecting you to qualify. They were so wrapped with how the car looked. But how are you feeling right now? Now we're all good. Just yeah. another day in the office. And now it's just good to be in the finals. And yeah, we'll try to put three good heats together and see what happens. Yeah, you had three really good heats last night. You gave us a hell of a fright when you um, had a car down here out on the uh, exit of turn four. But that obviously didn't cause too much damage for you. No, I just took the bumper a little bit, but yeah, that wasn't really expected, but just got caught out on the yeah. wet track, but no, we're all good. We managed to finish that race and put two more good ones together, and yeah, so see what happens tonight. All right, well, let's see what grid position Rob Corbin can uh, get for you, eh? What have we got? 18, that's not bad, Josh. That's uh, probably your back position, so you'll look forward to a mid and a front as well. Yeah, no, good to go. Awesome, well done Josh, good luck. Righty, we are here with the 17G car of Ethan Rees. Tough night qualifying, but you made it through. Yeah, definitely one of those nights, but uh, hey, we made it through and uh, we're in the main game, so bring it on. Righty, we've got young Jackson here who's going to do the grid draw for it. Yeah, what gr draw are you hoping for? What's left, really? Oh, just anything really. Like, like actually, it's uh, the same, same for everyone, so whatever's there, is it. So we'll get Jackson to do the grid draw. There's only two left, so any, meeny, miny, mo. He's drawn out both of them. And grid position five, got to be happy with that. Oh yeah, it is what it is, but you know, definitely happy with that. Bring it on. There he is, the 17G car of Ethan Rees off grid position five. As we head to the last one, it is the 82S of Booker. We are here with Hamish. Hey Hamish, oh look, here he comes, here he comes. We lost him. We lost, we lost old mate. Hey, um, you're sitting here, we, we spoke really briefly last night. This is the th third time that you've qualified. But tell us how you're feeling right now, because it has been a long time since you've actually been in this qualification group. Oh, yeah, no, just another meeting really at the moment, eh? I'm not too nervous yet or anything, so yeah, yeah. see how it goes. Well, while Trent James down there wasn't feeling very nervous until he pulled out grid position one, the poor guy. But hey, listen, what's your name over here, mate? Brock, Brock, do you want to see, there's only one more in here I think, is there? No, there's three, oh, of course, two for the repercharge. Oh, grid 15, Hamish, how do you feel about that? Oh yeah, it's not too bad, it's inside, so, yeah, yeah. but it is what it is really. Do you know when I was coming up and down the line, every single driver that I spoke to said I want it inside. Why the inside? <laughs> oh, just so you're further away from the wall when you're getting pushed into that corner, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it's the inside or the or the outside that I'd rather go to, but hey, you're the driver, I'm only the spectator, so hold on tight when you're coming around there. We wish you all the luck, Hamish. And that's it, everybody. That's all your grid positions. We've got the two uh, Reaper Charge races to come, and those guys will also pick their uh, numbers. <laughs>
Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop-off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. Need a quote? Call 07 847 2031. Or visit our website www.techweld.nz Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. So whether you are here for the 10th time, 20th time, 30th or the 1st, this is it, the New Zealand Superstock Championships. We've got two more drivers to find for the finals field tonight. It comes from this race here. This is the Repercharge, the Farum Boot Repercharge. Alex Hill and Robbie Morris will start on the front row. Cody Chatfield in the Silver Bullet and Daniel Burmester start on row number two. Then we go to 99B, Jacob Buckrell and Tyler James, 89G on grids 5 and 6. Todd Hemingway and Brendan Ty on grids 7 and 8. Rounding out the front five rows, Michael Rumney and Gary Lonigan on 9 and 10. Then it's Scott Joblin and Zane Dykstra on grids 11 and 12. Cooper and Gaskin, Adamson and last week's New Zealand Grand Prix winner, uh, Tim Ross, are there grids 13 through 16. Tony Wooten and Adam Joblin on 17 and 18. I'll come back and talk about Joblin in a moment. Uh, then we go to Ross Ashby and uh, Tom Hughes on grids 19 and 20. This is a full 26 car field. Jarvis and Marshall, then Ferguson and Mitchell, and then that back row in this one. Just scraping through to the Reaper charge is James Clark, the 29G, and Stefan Roygaard, who uh, unfortunately for him got DQ'd late in that uh, third heat for him last night when he was sitting pretty. What have we got laps wise? Uh, uh, this is a 12 lap. lap. So the Farum Boot Ripper Charge. It of is. The, uh, the two New Zealand title winners here at Huntley International Speedway in the past. And another name to add to that list tonight. It could be one of two drivers in this field. The Ripper Chargers go. Ready for this big push into the turn. They are quite separated early, which does help. Oh no, there we go. There's a few that are gone. Ty's gone around. Joblin's gone around. That is uh, Scott Joblin. But it's Buckrell, Rumney, Hemingway running early at the moment towards the front. Burmester gets his uh, wheels up in the air over the top of Cody Chatfield. Tyler James red gets light. spun up and red spat light. out and the lights go red. So it's for those two cars that were parked up over there, Ross Ashby in 38 and also the 52 of Scott Joblin so the track door get hooked up to Ross Ashby 38M so when they went past us James Buckrell 
was in the lead. Uh, where did he come from? Grid five and Rumney was into second. In the 7A, he'd come from grid nine. That's uh, how they were as they passed us. We'll see whether he may get moved back or not. Yeah, certainly Buckford was ahead of them when they crossed the start finish line. But I. But then, then obviously they all kind of took different directions mm. when, the, when they headed into the corner with those two cars uh, that were stranded down there. So uh, we've got 9R Robbie Morris is gone, 38M Ross Ashby's gone, 52 Scott Joblin, and the 6W of Paul Gaskin uh, out. So remember, first and second to the finals of the New Zealand Superstock Champs, Michael Rumney. Leading the race in the 7R car is Dad Lyle Rumney, the 1995 New Zealand Superstock Champion. Here we go. So round through turns three and four. James runs it wide into the concrete. Hughes pulls to the infield in the 707. Buckrell runs wide, drops back to fourth place. Lonigan gets it wrong. Jarvis hits the side of him. Problems for Adam Joblin. Dykstra dropping off the pace in the 38. We've got another couple of rounders. The race leaders come charging down into turn one and two. It's Jamie Ferguson who's stranded down there. Now Todd Hemingway goes through to the lead in the 99. Michael Rumney back to second. Then the 172 at Burmester. Alex, oh, Burmester gets taken to the wall by Tyler James. Is that Adam Joplin collecting them afterwards as well? So, uh, big hit there to James after James had taken Burmester into the wall. All right, we're still running and looking for the race leader. It is the 99, round through turn four. 99, then seven, then the second of the 99 cars. So we've got 99M. We're going red. We're going red. red line. So we'll. Man, there's some slow stoppers out there. <laughs> yeah. Only now have the last couple stopped. Right, so they'll move Simon Job. So Burmester's pulled to the infield. Yeah, I guess right flat tyre. Yeah, front tyre. So he has no choice. They're going to check on Adam Joplin. Yeah, he went into those... Uh, other two cars that had just gone into the wall fairly hard. So we're five laps, the race leaders have done five. See, when the lights went red, where are we looking? So officially Todd Hemingway and Michael Rumney are the only two that have completed uh, four laps. The lights went red before 99, 741, 95, uh, etc. across the line. Yes. That'll get fixed up. Uh, Obviously, if the referees are happy that everybody, you mentioned slow stoppers there, if the referees are happy that they've all kind of still at least held their places, which I think a lot of the drivers do tend to do, they're not, they're not going to go hard on the brakes and let the guy in front get an advantage or the guy behind them close up. They just kind of watch that car in front of them and, and maintain that, try to maintain that gap. It was a bit of a group just in behind the leaders though where I think one was slow on the brake, so the ones immediately behind him ease off a little bit as well because mm. they don't want to lose ground so yes you finished up there was a, a group around that turns one and two that all all gained quite a bit there now um so that's both joplin cars on the infield now this might be uh something for the record books as well it would yeah. be i think a long time since we've had a new zealand superstock championships uh, without a joplin in that finals field Al along with you know the the Rees, uh name as well two families that have been you know, I suppose it helps when you've got three Reeses and three Joblins that you at least get one of them through uh, over the years. But yeah, that'll be first for a while, I would imagine. Lights are out. Leaders down the main straight, 99 and 7. Buckrell goes straight ahead that time into the turn, and that leads Cody Chatfield and the bullet. Up into third place. James is trolling the pole line. Who's the 89 going to go after here? Oh, he's taking Buckrell to the wall. And Chapfield gets caught up there as well. And he's going to roll him over. We'll go red there. Red light, red light, red light. 
quite entertaining, the two James boys, <laughs> aren't they? Oh, look, we, I, we give them a little bit of... Uh, I wouldn't say grief, but certainly know that there's a few drivers who um, have been attacked by them over the years uh, for maybe no particular reason except the fact that these guys have bumpers and the stock cars and super stocks are allowed to do that. Um, and, you know, they've got to know the payback so comes sooner or later, but you're right, Barry, they, they are turning it on and they have done over the last two or three years. They, uh, they took a great aversion initially, I think, to cars painted bright red, but uh, <laughs> there's none out there at the moment, so we'll just take somebody else. Of course, uh, uh, another of the generational drivers, um, the sons mm. of Jeff James, who was a New Zealand Super Saloon champion. Yes. Uh, and then he got a 3NZ. NZ3 in, somewhere. In the, in the Super yeah. Stocks. Yeah. Uh, when it, I think it was racing out of Bay Park at the time with the gorge chassis, the silver, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the chassis painted up gold with the blue body. So Jacob Buckle He's okay. is out. No, so a bit of work to do on the Buckle you know, car before well, the, uh, the second tier. Again, do we throw, do we throw the, uh, the letter into it? You know, is it a G thing? Look, we, is, it, is it a club um, scenario where He's looking at some of these drivers going, well, you're a real threat to some of my other club mates right, taking this title later on tonight. I'm taking you out. <laughs> Jacob Buckle, Daniel Burmester yes. have been his target so far tonight. So we keep an eye on the 89. He's still crawling the pole line. 99.795. Those three have a big advantage. We've got four laps remaining. Is he going to have a go here at Alex Hill? He is! Takes the South Island champion to the concrete wall. Running in third place, the 95 in. So this now for those front two, 99 and 7, have a massive advantage. It'll be white flag next time around for the 99. Tom Cooper moves up into third place. James Clark has come from the back of the grid up into fourth place. But here comes the race leader. One lap to go. Oh, and Hemingway's going to get caught up in all of that. So 7R goes to the race lead. Oh, and look out, Hemingway. Is James going to have a go at the 99 into the last turn? He's not going to be quick enough. Mick Rumney will take the checkered flag. And Todd Hemingway will come home in second place. So Michael Rumney from Grid 9, Todd Hemingway from Grid 7 will join the big dance. James Clark from Grid 25 yes. to third. And look, and we James Clark has shown plenty of pace. Yeah. Um, and, and look, Tom Cooper the there. Bridge, look, I, I briefly Seven mentioned it just before he went back racing there. Ty, um, the Tyler James doing that blocking. You know, with, with thinking his other Gisborne teammates, there were a couple of them out there. Uh, in that one, Tim Ross, another one. Look at that, Gisborne, three, four, and six in that race uh, with some great blocking and entertainment. And, and look, Peter Rees mentioned it the other night, Barry, you here at practice uh, when he was joined you up yes, here in the commentary yes. box. You know, a lot of these drivers, they do just want to get out there and be able to entertain. Obviously, it's about winning, uh, but after that, uh, you know, they take that mentality that they want to entertain, and uh, that's what it's about. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together. Michael Rumney with the flag. But these are your two drivers who will now join the finals field of the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstock Championships for 2023. The Bay of Plenty duo. One out of Rotorua, one out of Bay Park. Both out of mini stocks. There's another stat to look at tonight with the net uh, field. I'm sure somebody will uh, run through that for us and tell us who's come out of mini stocks. There's a whole lot of them, that is for sure. Uh, but Mick Rumney, add another one from the Rotorua Club, one more from Bay Park, two from Bay of Plenty. And we now have our 26 car finals field. We need to wait and see uh, which of those drivers are going to start on which grid positions.
Yeah, Stu was going to try and get uh, those. The way it was explained earlier, they they're actually going to draw those well, somewhere one, along one, the line. One person will get to draw. Yes, only one <laughs> needs to draw, obviously. The other gets the dregs, but... Uh, Stu was hoping to uh, catch up with him straight after this. All right, just interrupting, Craig Tonkin is about to leave the commentary box. He's got a box full of goodies and giveaways, so look out for him uh, out on the terraces and uh, you might get yourself a, not a great giveaway tonight. So we're looking at some of the replays. There's Tyler James getting spun to the infield, and from there, uh, that's when he kind of decided, well, let's get into action mode and stirring mode. So Michael Rumney in the 7R, he was the early race leader, Bit of a collision there, that's uh, where Adam Joblin had his first issues and I think it's down in, it was only the next corner, here we go, so here's Burmester being taken to the concrete wall uh, by Tyler James and it was not long after that that uh, Joblin uh, collected them as well. And here's the second incident with James on Jacob Buckrell and Cody Chatfield just getting caught in there as well. See what group this might be, Barry. Did you end up with the uh, different now tiers? Now I got given a, a grid for tier three. All right. So if none of the cars are okay. on that, all right. This is tier three. Uh, so <laughs> because okay. because of the um, change of race program, uh, we're not have, we don't have the consolations. So this is the advanced joinery tier three, and yes, it's just been updated on our screens to confirm that as well. So uh, for what? Uh, these guys tonight, obviously a tough night at the office last night, uh, so they are out here in Tier 3 competition, Joe Carter in the 18 will start off pole, these are 10 laps for our field tonight in Tier 3. Uh, we do want to say um, thank you to Ground, okay. We're going we're gonna to head down to the pits. Uh, Stu, you've got an update for us. I certainly do. I've got Todd Hemingway. Mate, that was a, uh, a tough race. Obviously, you, you led it for a bit there. Young uh, Tyler was out on the pole line, mate. Would have been a bit nervous going past him a couple of times. Yeah, no, I knew Tyler had my back, actually. We talked about it before that race. So, yeah, I knew I was safe with him, but... I about pinned it on that last corner, that was that was lucky that last lap. <laughs> Did you realise sort of what lead you had at the time? Uh, I knew Mick was behind me in second and uh, I just m misunderstood where they were on the track and I went wide and they washed up, got tangled up, Mick got me and I wasn't sure if I came second or third but lucky I yeah, just scraped through. Mate, through the finals I'll let you get back to it and I'll catch up with Mick who, uh, where is he? Mick! Over here mate, he's just grabbing the water. Yep, you got time there Stu. There we so, go mate, hey yep. well done through to the finals brother. Epic man, it's, that was the plan, but I <laughs> didn't realise it would go that good. Mate, it would have been good seeing uh, Tyler down there on the pole line. I know he's from the Gizzy Club, but he's a, he's a Rotorua boy from uh, from Jeff's days. Would have been good. Yeah, mate. Um, no, it was epic. I honestly didn't realise that he was blocking for me until we come back in and the boys let me know, because, you know, we've had battles with them over the club, and then, but, you know, they're, yeah, just absolute legend. Absolute legend. Mate, you're on a high now. Let's carry that high through to the next three heats. We'll let you go sort your grid out and... Uh, Hey, all the best, man. Four races tonight, though, it's going to be hard work. Yeah, mate, it's going to be hard work, but we're up for it. All good. There we go, Meg Rapney, Todd Hemingway, your two Ripper Charge winners. Uh, awesome stuff. Congratulations to them both. Big night ahead, yeah, like we say, four races, but we talk quite often about these drivers coming through from the Ripper Charge. They're already pumped. Their nerves are done. They, they weren't expecting to race. They were hoping, but not expecting to race in the finals tonight. So, you know, their nerves are sweet. They've already got a race under their belt. They go into it a whole lot more relaxed in the opening heat. Right, we're not far away from the start. Advanced joinery bringing you Tier 3. Three 10-lap races tonight. It is Carter and McConchie, the Bay Park pair, sitting on the front row. Philip Gargan and Hilton Parker on row number two. So we're at the starter's hands. Let's go racing. Regan McKenzie off onto the grass and manages to keep it under control there. Couple coming together. Oh, Hilton Parker and uh, I think it might be Murray Kitt down there. We've got the the triple eight, Mike McCarthy, in the Jack Myers car by the looks of things. Uh, so a change there in the race car. Boy, look at him go <laughs> zipping down, <laughs> zipping down the inside there. Uh, out front though, it looks as though it's the seven one seven of Dan Pollock and Joe Carter. 
who are battling for the lead. Seth McConchie right on the tail. Pollock to the front. Oh, big coming together. 599. The 6R and the 7 off turn 2. We'll go red. Red, light, red, red, light, red, red. red so this will be for the 6R of uh, Liam Marsh. 6R to the infield, please. And they'll send him infield. So he was excluded from the meeting last night, wasn't That's he? That's what must I just met, met must, last night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unless it's a different driver in it, possibly. But, um, yeah, pass. No, looking down our sheet, uh, it is still Liam Marsh. Okay. Maybe it was just the one night. So Caelan Mooney, he's been one of the big movers in the 26. Now he puts the bumper into the race leader, the 272 of Seth McConchy is your leader 26 717 here comes josh patterson joe carter gets it crossed up in the 18. he's had a few issues down in turn one and two over the course of the weekend and can confirm barry that the uh the 18 m car has had one run at bay park okay we were discussing that one last night paul basie 351 off onto the infield so he retires from this one caitlin mooney the new race leader in the 26, Josh Patterson now right on his tail. Here comes Dan Pollock pushing his way through. Kaylin Mooney here last weekend in the stock cars. Racing for the Wanganui Vulcans team who uh, had a, uh, well, not a very good night at the office last week. Likewise for Mooney last night, uh, hence the tier three spot tonight. Shining out in this one at the moment though, the 26 year race leader with seven gone, Dan Pollock, Josh Patterson, then Seth McConchie, Tyler Walker's moved up into the top five. So we've got Ty, Marsh, Parker, Gargan and Vasey on the infield. Round through turn one and two of the race leaders. Oh, Kaelin Mooney has to take evasive action there. That's going to close that gap up a bit. Pollock's going to close right up. He gets a bit of pressure on the back bumper from Patterson in the 31W. So that is your leading bunch of five. So Kaelin Mooney just maintaining a slight buffer while the rest of these guys do a little bit of uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. How you doing out of my way? Joe Carter in the... <laughs> Concrete wall in the number 18 and the chicken flag drops. It's definitely his favourite corner. Yeah. And this is tier three, Paul, and there's some guys out oh. there that at different stages of last night looked like qualifying. Yep, they did. Kalen Mooney takes the win in 26V from 31W, Josh Patterson. 717H, Dan Pollock. 133S, Tyler Walker. Then 33R, Robbie Maybe. Round out the top five. 461B, Brett Kelly in sixth. Seth McConchie and some of that uh, uh, late stuff ended up in seventh. 247, Hayden Chapman. 888, Mike McCarthy. And 119, Zach Harris. Round out the top ten race. Uh, number three officially, uh, two on the track. Reminder, our consolation races have been uh, pulled. Just enough cars for the three-tier uh, championship tonight. So Caelan Mooney looking uh, pretty smooth out there in that one. And yeah, you're right, Barry. These, these are drivers, some of them who, until the last lap, a couple of them were looking well, very, very yes. likely of being in the finals. And yet they end up in tier three. Yeah, unbelievable, isn't it? So... Um you just got to have three consistent races. But boy, yeah, some of these guys have shown some pace and the tier two and tier three is going to have some good racing tonight, I think, because there's so many top drivers uh, in every, well, all three divisions that we're racing tonight. One's got the big title on it. The others are, are really for fun and what could have been. They are still all racing for uh, prize money and trophies and sashes tonight, though, across uh, all of our different, um, across each of our different tiers. So mm. tier 
three. First place overall, 500 bucks and a trophy. 400 for second, 300 for third. Yeah, there'll be, be a bit yeah. of pride in the old payback, I imagine. And, <laughs> and some of these cars, too, you know, they're not very many meetings old with the amount of rain outs that we've had in that. Yep. Some of these guys are still dialing their cars in, so it's uh, a very high-speed practice session for some of them. Yeah, it certainly is. Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop-off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. Need a quote? Call 07 847 2031. Or visit our website www.techweld.nz Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. It doesn't matter how hard the job is, we suck it up and get it done. No matter how dirty our hands have to get, we suck it up and get it done. Suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Out for sake, suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Out for sake, suck, suck it up. Suck it up and get it done with suckitup.co.nz. Stock cars coming out now, so we're moving them forward. Just to uh, obviously give the rest of the team a chance to get any, any work, last minute work done or repairs done to the cars. Yeah, because tier two is made up uh, mostly of cars, obviously, that were um, in that river charge. So they need a little bit of a break and uh, before they, they come out for the first heat of the finals with the first and second places from that river charge. So the most important field for the super stocks will be the third one out. Um, Following the ripper charge, obviously we'll do the tier three, then stock cars here, then tier two, and then heat one of the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Super Stock Champs. 15 laps for the Super Stock Championship heats. Uh, definitely. So, uh, as we say, give them a chance to refuel, get any, any repairs done from that, and then they will be straight out. But uh, looking out onto the track now, we've got uh, stock cars coming in, coming line, lining up, and, the, and a massive field of stock cars here. Uh, predominantly Hamilton cars, but cars from all over the place, so looking forward to them. Just looking at the live streaming now, the last of the cars coming out. Get them onto the, onto the track and uh, get them underway. Probably a great time if you are looking a little bit peckish, there's plenty of food and that around the track. Feel free to grab that while we're waiting to get into this race. And uh, get yourself uh, back, back to your seats and uh, back into it, ready for the uh, action coming up real soon. Yeah, so the pit gate's still open, the stock is rolling out, there's a bit of a gap there, one of them must have stalled and I thought that was it, but uh, there's still more coming out. So to, to, be, uh, to be sure, I thought the same thing and I was waiting for the gates to shut, but uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of cars coming out. Great stuff. A lot of cars equals a lot of carnage by my <laughs> reckoning and uh, that's certainly what we're here to see. I think you might be right on that one. Just looking to see if we can go through a bit of a, a grid draw for you, but uh, just waiting on that to come up. So in the meantime, there's still more cars coming out. 28 cars. So that's a big field of stock cars here tonight. Obviously to, to, uh, to get into the action. But Logan Pete in the 8A just making his way out now. Very slowly. I uh, don't think he's got his crash helmet on. It's possibly why he's uh, not going any further than that. <laughs> um, yeah, you forgot something there, mate. <laughs> kind of comes in handy. And uh, Red just waiting to to head out in the in the water truck, and then we're going to get the get the gate shut, get these guys underway. Obviously, with the uh, the Hamilton car of '67 row sitting on pole position, 361 Clinton Cheatham right behind him. That's going to be a car to watch. He's uh, he's always up for a bit of fun, Clinton. So uh, keep an eye on that one, 361. Just while they're doing that three-minute bell, um, the two river charge grids, if you've already got them. No, we haven't. Okay, so 99M Todd Hemingway will go from grid 13 in heat one. 99M Todd Hemingway, grid 13. And 7R Mig Rumney from grid nine in heat one. And I'll let you boys fill in the rest. All right, <laughs> thank you for that, Stu. Will you uh, go to work with that, Barry? And uh, looks like we're going to be getting underway. The gates are finally closing. Yeah, I'll just fill those in and uh, yeah, catch up with those after the stock car heat. That'll be great, mate. Appreciate that. 
Can number 8A underway now. Got his helmet on. Got his helmet done up. Rev's coming up. In the hands of the starter. Looking good. We are racing. 67 straight out onto the pole, but it's a Clinton Cheatham right behind him. Looking like we're pretty much safely through, what not quite safely through one and two. A few cars spin out there. Easier to go around that corner correctly than sideways facing the wall. Car number 68 getting a bit of a spin around there, but coming around past the start finish line now, we're looking at Michael Rowe. 67 up in front, Keegan Orr, 735R, but we've gone red. Just uh, some of the cars over on the turn one, turn two pole up. Just want to check on, on some of the drivers. I'll just do those last uh, two grid positions while yeah, we're under red there. So page 33 of your program. And two to add to the bottom. 7R Michael Rumney. 7R Michael Rumney. Big grids 9, 22 and 10. And 99M Todd Hemingway. 99M Todd Hemingway. 13, 26 and 2. Okay, we're back into it, racing again, we're green. Car number eight down through turn one and two, always a car to keep an eye on that one. He likes a little bit of contact through there. Let's say Clinton Cheatham 361, another car to keep an eye on, but looking back to it, two laps down, 52A is your, your car in front of the moment, Samuel Van Amsterdam. 735R of Keegan Orr in second place. Michael Rowe dropping down to third. Also starting to get cleanly into the race and under control. Car number 97 coming down through turn, turn four onto the front straight, Casey Cheatham. Three laps down, eight to go. Casey just turned, coming back into it, gone red again. Be straight down here in front of me actually uh, yep coming over to check on Jaden. he was up up hard against the wall so make sure he's all okay just during that restart Paul Hickey pointed out to me as well that uh, Mick Rubney starting heat one of the New Zealand Superstop champs in grid nine exactly the same position he started the rapid charge from so uh, at least he's got practice already <laughs> going into that first corner with uh, in a big field of cars and how to come out the other side so let's hope he can do it twice tonight always good to have a bit of practice coming coming into that we've got card number okay, eight over on turn one and two you okay thumbs up probably please. a bit thumbs easier up. if you're facing the right way so he's going to have to spin around pretty quickly when we go into green so 52a samuel van amsterdam that's your race leader at the moment four laps down eight to go keegan Orr in second place michael rowe 67 h is uh is car in third place then back to 361 Clinton Cheatham in fourth and 4H of Josh Humble in the fifth so those are your top five cars there and as I say we've got eight laps to go once we get back underway but looks like the uh, the 32 being towed off into the infield so that's the end of the race for for Jaden for Jaden Dredden Manning Didn't see how he ended up in the wall, but he was uh, running down the front straight up against the wall pretty hard, so his race is done. Having a quick look around, that looks like the only car of concern, so we're going to get back in the way. Rev's coming up, lights are out. We are green, we're racing. Massive jump for the, uh, for the 25, but uh, all underway, so no issues there. As you say, five laps down, seven to go. Van Amsterdam, or Rowe, Cheatham and Humble in your top five. Van Amsterdam coming around turn three and four, gives a slight little tap but keeps it under control. Keegan Orr just giving him a little tap. There's your race leader in second place, right on each other's tail coming down the back straight. Another car spun out on turn one and two but he's backing in off the, off the track so he's okay, underway. Clinton coming around with uh, with brother. Looking at uh, car number four of Josh Humble. 
working his way up through the field. Seven laps down, five to go. Still looking Van Amsterdam, Or Rowe, Cheatham, Humble in your top five. Then we've got Logan Pete, 8A in sixth place. Nevin, Sh Nevin Shrub, 87, 8 in seventh. Seven three five, Keegan Orr. Race leader coming down the back straight. Two laps to go. Red light, red light, red light. Looking to go on red again. Possibly for Possibly can number 79H down here. Please, you have a right front flat Norman tire. Anderson. He's driven off before they can even get over there and check <laughs> on him. <laughs> the law of averages. Always the way, isn't it? Yeah. Just waiting for a gap to turn off, but uh, gone red, so that's his race run. Lights out. Okay, light, lights out. Two lap, two lap sprint, basically. Car number 735, Keegan Orr is your race leader. Begin the white flag this time round. White flag down, one to go. Big contact through Clinton and uh, Josh Humble. Chase is on between those two. But 735, Keegan Orr. Rotorua driver coming round out of turn four now. Coming down to save the checker flag. He's going to be looking at the flag and he gets it. 735, uh, Rotorua driver. Keegan Orr, first place. 67H, Michael Rowe in second. 52A, Samuel Van Amsterdam, third place, Josh Humble, local car, 4 H in fourth, Clinton Cheatham, 361 in fifth. Then we're looking at Shrub, Pete, Shaw, Holloway, Henderson, Cheatham, Aiken, Vermeulen, Prentice, Marshall and Ethan Edinburgh rounding out the, the field on that. So it's how, how it's going to finish for Heat 1 of the stock cars tonight. Not afraid to get up close and personal and, and have a few conversations, so we say, on the track. So Keegan Orr with the win, and uh, yeah, good to see the stock cars out there with a bit of crash and bash tonight, <laughs> Craig. Just looking down here on the infield of the car number 97, one of the Cheatham boys just uh, pushing 14R into pits after he was the one that stopped them working really. <laughs> <laughs> Got you on the race now, I'll have you off. Yeah, it's what it's about. It is. Uh, Chicken flag for the 735, and great to see Keegan back behind the wheel. Uh, in the stock car, Jim Holloway out there in uh, the 14B. Of course, winner of the Aotearoa Ladies Stock Car Crown, the kind of unofficial Ladies New Zealand Championship. Uh, so she won that tight back to back, wasn't it? Uh, two years in a row. It's a good so, effort to see. Yep, so. Uh, viewers through the Pits TV, we welcome you in wherever you are across New Zealand and uh, around the world for this meeting from Huntley in the Waikato region of New Zealand. And we are counting down to the main event, but we've got Tier 2 to come out and uh, we've got Tier 1 coming up next. Okay. Oh boy, so it's the real deal. All right. The main event is about to happen so we'll get this sorted up here what am i doing what am i hoping to accomplish and at the end of the day the answer is always right before us we're hoping to cause a change in something you're trying to live or you may be a person living the causality continues conundrum Here we go. They are about to start rolling out your finals field. We have got, let's take a look at this lineup and this breakdown. 
from across New Zealand. From the north to the south, we have got one driver out there representing Auckland. The Kiki region have got five drivers. There are no local drivers in the field, uh, sadly, for Huntley. Uh, there are four cars from Rotorua, three from Bay Park, five from Gisborne, two from Hawke's Bay, one Wanganui, one Stratford, two from Palmerston North, one Wellington, one Nelson, and no Christchurch car uh, making the final. Just uh, a word up, 31W, Josh Patterson was in Tier th 3, or was he in the rip charge? Tier 3. Um, I, I know he got pinged last night for not re-entering okay. the track where he... Uh, he's, been, he's been pinged for not, uh, for not meeting safety gear requirements. Yeah, so okay. uh, that, that's his uh, second penalty of the weekend then. All right, here we go. Main event of the New Zealand Superstock Champs. Heat 1, let's take a look at the grids. On the front row, Maddie Wise, 136P, alongside Quinn Ryan, 46B. Row two, Brett Nichols on the inside, and Sam Hughes in his debut New Zealand Championship starting on grid number four. On five is 127, Ethan G, uh, Ethan Rees, just inside his father, Peter Rees. Uh, then we go to the uh, 56B and the 75 uh, sorry that's the 56 v of trent james on grid seven and 75k gavin tunnifar mick rumney starts on grid number nine after winning that ripper charge inside elias dykes for 5m then it is matt nielsen and his key key club mate asher rees and defending champion starting on grid 12. todd hemingway via the ripper charge starts on grid 13. new zealand champion two years ago randall tarrant just outside uh, him, Randall Tarrant, uh, the 66, starting on grid number 14. Hamish Booker and Rebecca Barr, the female in the field, starting on grid number 16. Richard Gaskin and Josh Prentice on 17 and 18, ahead of Chad Ace and Dylan Ashton. Onto the back three rows we go. It is 9 and 19, Jamie Hamilton and Kerry Remnant, before we come to Brett Loveridge and Mark Costello. And the back row of Heat 1 for the Pollock Cranes, New Zealand Superstock Championships, Matt Pickard and Damian Orr. The inside row is sorted. The outside row making their way up. Barry Brown. Oh, we've got a few issues. Uh, we've got yeah, Brett, Brett Nichols. Nichols. So... Uh, He's calling for the three-minute bell down by the pit gate. Grid three is where he's supposed to be sitting. Yep, you can see the gap that's being left there. Um, and Sam Hughes is on grid four, so um, Hughes has just left that gap there as well. He's, he's probably unaware uh, that he should probably actually be up. Uh, and here comes Dylan Ashton as well in 422. If he's got an issue, because the three-minute bell has already started. Yes. There, there is only one three-minute bell. Um, so he's well, they haven't opened the pit gate yet, so whether they just wait for all the cars to come round before they actually start the time. Okay, is, oh, is that not? There's a crew member over with Brett Nichols. Yeah, so, there is. So, so, the, must so have the started. clock has started. Yeah. Um, so that's it. Um, and now you've got crew running down for the Ashton car. So it doesn't seem. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, that was uh, the Brett Nichols crew. Yeah, got mentioned in the interviews early on, Brett Nichols, regular qualifier at big meetings like this, but when it comes to lap one of the opening heat, geez, he just uh, uh, has a lot of bad luck. I would be more than happy to see a small number on the side of the 48 end yes. car. But what a line up of super stocks. One of these 26 so will... So Sunstrike we're looking at there, oh, okay. putting some tape across the screen of the, uh, the Brett Nichols 48 N. So it's the only one that's quite often you do see that happen, and, and but there's a flurry of cars that do it generally, um, not just the one, but they're doing the same thing on the 422. Okay. But uh, yeah, maybe some of these uh, other guys have got ahead of the game and already put some on. Of it's course, just it, about gone too. Yeah, it has. Um, and, and of course, they kind of factor in was it a, a factor for them last night, so they would know. Yep, I, I do need some on tonight. Um, right, we've got a few kids on the fence, please, mums and dads. Please move your children off that safety fence around the track, please, kids. Well, all people. <laughs> Sometimes it's the big kids that lean on the fence as well. So please, uh, everybody off that safety fence at the front. I know you want to get up close and uh, see it all happening. 
uh, please move back from those safety fences to uh, where you've been sitting uh, for the evening so far. Thank you so much. Right, Brett Nichols. We'll see him come around and he'll slot in. Two back on the inside row. And the 4-2-2 of Dylan Ashton, he's back on grid 20. So we'll see them do a lap here anyway. So the inside row. Head off, Matty Wise sets a, a slow pace on this one. Now he takes off, right Barry. Boy, everybody's had their chance, we've had ours. Here we go for the 2023 New Zealand Superstock champs. It's, look, I, I know we both said earlier on Ethan Reeves to win it after <laughs> picking that lucky group, but seriously, there's, oh, there's a whole host of drivers who could uh, leave here tonight with their hands on that prestigious trophy. Oh, there is, and uh, so Ethan Reeves was my pick anyway for that reason, but um, yeah, there's, there's a whole host out here who could win it, and you could not say they weren't deserving of winning it either, so... Qualifying is that hard when you've got well over 100 cars these days. You've got to make the top four in your group out of 20 and uh, to get into this final 26. A couple of courses have come through the river charge. But Asher Reese, he won't be giving the title up lightly and we've seen how fast he can go at a car that's falling apart around him on more than one occasion, not just last night. This is it. Race fans, we've travelled, we've waited, and now we are almost set. 26 of the best superstock drivers from across the land of the long white cloud come together with on the long white concrete wall of Huntley Speedway, set to take on 45 laps of this circuit to become the 2023 New Zealand Superstock Champion. I'll be interested to see how the two at the back go, the 198R and the 81R, they were both very quick last night yep. and very consistent. If they can finish up sort of around that top 10 area after this race, that really livens up their championships, doesn't it? What a lineup it is. There it is, your grid for the Pollock Cranes. 2023 New Zealand Superstock Championships race fans Buckle up, we're about to go racing. Hold on tight in turn number one. Who will be number one? By the end of tonight, we will know. It's in the starter's hands and we are racing for the New Zealand Championship of 2023. The field splits. There's a good division which just opens things up nicely through that opening turn. And Brett and Nichols backwards across the infield. Yeah, there we go. There's that Brett Nichols luck, isn't it? Around goes Kerry Remnant in the number 19, getting pushed sideways, coming off turn number four. Gets a whole lot of bodywork ripped off. Hamish Booker out into the concrete wall. Out front though, it is the 136 of Matty Wise. From 46B, Quinn Ryan. Trent James, the youngster, gets fired out into the concrete wall. Todd Hemingway is up into fourth place from his grid 13 start. Oh, there goes Matt Nielsen, gets dished up by Hughes down through turn three and four, but Nielsen back on the pace there pretty quick. So the Rees brothers, in fact, look at this, the Rees is running uh, all back to back here. Oh no, sorry, that is, uh, that's Randall Tarrant in the 66. Just ahead of Peter Rees, here comes Trent James, back up the inside of the 1NZ. Who's tangled up down there? That's Jamie Hamilton, Elias Dykstra, and Chad Ace all had a big coming together in turn one and two. That slows them all down. No, so, that was uh, Josh Prentice. Oh, was it Josh yeah. Prentice? So, out front, it is still Matty Wise in 136. 46B Quinn Ryan slowly closing that gap up on him. The 1NZ of Asher Rees makes a pass on the 10 of Peter Rees. Trent James still right on their tail. Look at that. The How's that for New Zealand champions? Randall Tarrant, Asher Rees, Peter Rees all running back to back in this race down there in 7th, 8th and ninth place. We've got six laps gone, approaching half distance. And the race leaders down the main straight into turn three and four. Those front two got a bit of a jump. And here we go, Matty Wise just a little bit, came off the gas a little bit quicker there than normal as he starts coming up on back markers. Rebecca Barr's caught in the outside wall. Problems for the 34P. 
but it is still 146 from 46. And Quinn Ryan is closing that gap up just a little bit. They've still got a buffer at the moment. Oh, Brent Lover down in control uh, off the end of the uh, pit straight and entering back into turn number one. So Wise, Ryan, Rees, Tanifa, Hemingway. The way they run at the front at the moment. And Asher Rees makes a pass on Randall Tarrant and moves up into sixth place. Tarrant not giving up on him though. He keeps the pressure on in the 66. Around the outside. So it's still 136 your race leader from 46. Down into the turn of three and four. So the field well spread around the racetrack here at Huntley International Speedway. Ten laps gone, five to go. Still 136. You just get the feeling that Quinn Ryan just hedging his bets at the moment. He's uh, not putting any pressure on Matty Wise into the corners. Wise seems to pull away from him a little down the straight. But Ryan right back on his back bumper as they head into the turns. Maybe, just maybe foxing a little bit. Although this time around, Matty Wise now just opens that out a little bit more. Gavin Tanifa, 75k. Then the 99 of Todd Hemingway and 127 of Ethan Rees. The World 240s champion are uh, running there. Josh Prentice puts the bumper in, pushes Ethan, uh, Asher Rees wide and up a spot. So Josh Prentice up into sixth. Oh, and then Rees comes back with the bumper trying to force Prentice wide. Can't make it stick though. There's the race leader onto the main straight. 136. Matty Wise from pole position. And now in comes the bumper from Quinn Ryan. And it's forced uh, Matty Wise wide. It's white flag here. Look at this. Quinn Ryan. It was as if he was counting the laps. Round goes uh, Loveridge. Here we go. Here's the battle into the last turn. Matty Wise and Quinn Ryan. Ryan not quite close enough to get that bumper into Matty Wise. All the way from pole position, 136. Matty Wise will take the win on a spin right at the end. They were down the field anyway for Brett Nichols and Matt Nielsen. Woo! So the Pollock Cranes. New Zealand Superstock Championships is underway. One heat down, two to go. Let's take a look at the provisional top uh, finishes here. Matty Wise takes that win in 1-3-6 from Quinn Ryan, 46B. Gavin Tunnifar rounds out the top three. Uh, then it was Todd Hemingway, 99M, 127G, Ethan Rees in fifth. Then 1NZ, Asher Rees. 5G One, Josh three, Prentice six, in 7th, 10G Peter Rees in 8th, 66 Randall Tarrant in 9th, and Trent James 56V in 10th. It was then Damien Orr, Mark Costello, Barry you mentioned them from the back, they're up to 11th and 12th. Mm -hmm. Then Michael Rumney, Dylan Ashton, all those four Rotorua cars, 11, 12, 13, 14. Sam Hughes, Richard Gaskin, Jamie Hamilton, Elias Dykstra, Hamish Booker, and Kerry Remnant round out the top 20. If you're 21st to 26th in the opening heat, mm, you are pretty much out of the running. Ah, boy, oh boy. Here we go, Barry's doing his uh, thing on big moves. Uh, just jump in there, Barry, when you're ready. Yeah, um, we'll just have a look at those, but obviously the uh, grid 25 and 26, they've come up to 11th and 12th. So uh, there's probably nobody going to be a lot more than that. I think um, Josh Prentice came from about grid 18 because our lap sheet's a bit of a jumble, so it's going to take a little while to go through. Yes. Um, and that one the, where you called that it was Chad Ace, and I said, no, I thought it was Josh Prentice. I had a look after it. was actually Elias Dykstra. And uh, yep. there's more than one number five out there. So, yeah, Matt, Matty Wise started from pretty close to the front from memory. Uh, yeah, he was on pole. Uh, yeah, he was on pole. And, so. and, and Quinn Ryan was alongside him. So front row have finished first and second. Uh, Gav Tunnifar, he's come up from grid eight uh, to third place. See Todd Hemingway. Um, we saw him in that ripper charge, and he started on 13 and up to fourth, so that's not bad either. So, like some of them just didn't fire. Jamie Hamilton, grid 21 to 17. Uh, he got caught up. I think he was involved in that incident as well that I, that, I, that we called over in one and two, I think. E Ethan Reese, five to fifth. 
And um, so he's five. He started on grid five. Yeah, yes, Peter Reese started on grid six, and he's finished eighth. So he's actually gone backwards. Uh, Asher, where did he go from twelve up to six? So he's made six spots. But yeah, some some of the guys that have uh, sort of got power to burn in that at the moment, that track just didn't suit them, did it? So Damien Orr and Mark Costello. Um, so yeah, Damien Orr grid 26 up to 11. So yeah, that's what up 15 spots, and Mark Costello uh, up 13. So that's those are the the big moves. As if you're on the stream, we're taking in some of the replays. There's Trent James getting slammed out into the concrete wall. Matt Nielsen, that's uh, when he had a coming together there. Mick Rumney getting uh, pushed wide in the number seven. Yeah, here's the come. Yes, yeah, so it was Jamie Hamilton, Elias Dykstra, and Chad Ace who had that coming together down in uh, turn one and two. Uh, with Chad Ace, the one that uh, stayed sitting there for a little while. Kerry Remnant in the walls, uh, losing part of his body work there. Brett Nichols, oh my goodness. You wouldn't read about his first lap luck or lack of at a major championship. And as the chicken flag fell for Matty Wise, a couple of those cars off onto the infield as well. So uh, now we come to tier two, Craig, and this is... Yep, we're looking at uh, tier two coming out now. So just a slight change to the, the order of the of proceedings for the night. Okay, so let, let's confirm that um, because we haven't got any grids yet for tier two because it's something that obviously that this these are all the cars that were out in the reaper charge um and all that grid draw stuff is kind of all of us quickly happened since the reaper charge so we don't have our hands on any of that so far so we are going two three so the order from here on in well we've just had the final just had, yep. we've just had the final so we're, we're calling that tier one so we're essentially going one two three stock cars one, yep. two, three stock cars, and then one and two to finish us off because uh, the next time tier three come out and the stock cars, it's their second race it's of the, the night. Exactly, yep. All right, so one, two, three stock cars, one, two, three stock cars, one, two, to wrap up the night. So just a uh, slight change there, but uh, nothing that we can't, can't, oh, we'll handle, uh, can't it, eh? handle. Um, so we'll head down to the pits and uh, get some updates uh, from Stu Russell. Uh, as to some of those retirements there, what may have happened, and I'm sure Bianca and Gabe will be on to some interviews to chat to some of um, our drivers uh, who were involved in the opening heat of the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstock Championships. We talk about your sponsors here, Craig, and Pollock Cranes, exactly. uh, big sponsor, but um, sponsoring Tier 2, Lightning Concrete, another one of your long-time supporters here at Huntley. They are definitely, they've been uh, been with us for a long time, and as I said before, we really appreciate uh, all the support from all of our sponsors, but uh, no, fantastic to have Lightning Concrete on board and uh, in sponsoring this, this race. So uh, big shout out, have a look around the track, look at all the sponsors we've got, livestock, feed systems, made in metal. It, uh, we need to have these guys and we really appreciate it. Uh, all the volunteers, all the fans of course, but uh, no, it's great to have them on board. Alright, um, I think we are, just as these cars grid up, we are going to send them off on a uh, uh, formation lap. We might have time to head to the pits for a quick interview, just uh, waiting to see if uh, we are sorted down there as they head off. James Clark in the 29 uh, out of Gisborne, he will lead them around. Um, great run from him in that reaper charge, came right from the back up to finish in uh, third or fourth place from memory. Paul Gaskin in 6W ended up on the infield, a DNF in the reaper charge race. The outside row, they head off on their formation lap. All right, we are going to head to the pits. Let's do it nice and quick. Race winner, Matty Wise is with Bianca. You have to be quick to catch you, Matty Wise. It was a game of catch me if you can. You just took off and that was the end of that. Yeah, there was a plan off one. I just knew I had to get around the first few corners and try go. Otherwise, I'd be caught up and all the other stuff. So, yeah, it worked in that race. So. Hey, um, did you see what was happening behind you or were you just focused eyes forward? No, nah, eyes forward for me. Just focusing on getting that good finish in that one. I tell you what, there was a lot happening, so you were really lucky to get clear of that. Um, big smile on your face, of course, you drew grid position one. Mate, no stress with that at all. What's your next three, uh, sorry, two positions? 
Uh, my next grades are 14 and 26, so tough one up next, but uh, yeah, give it a go. It is what it is, eh? Hey, really quickly, for one final question, how's the track holding up? Uh, it changed completely over that race, so it was like, um, yeah, just every lap I seen it getting blacker and blacker, so I had to slow it down, slow it down, make sure I wasn't making mistakes, because obviously the blacker it is, it's like really gets quite hard to drive on, so yeah, sort of staying consistent, so yeah. How ironic though is it that you have to actually slow it down to be able to win the race, eh? Yeah, I know, it's quite tough, because you're sort of trying to like go, 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 but you need to like pull back and stay focused, so yeah. Hey mate, you've got a lot to focus on, put it there, well done, congratulations, good win, cheers. Yeah, that's what you've got to do, eh, from that front row, is take the win. Matty mentioned there his next two grids, 14. Yeah, that is a tough one if it ends up being that big push. You know, that's where you don't want to be. Uh, but then 26, um, right down the back here. Just let stuff unfold in front of you. But again, we talked about it earlier on. Different drivers prefer different ways of the grid. But here we go. Thanks to Lightning Concrete, this is Tier 2. Clark on the front row, along with Nicholson, maybe. Wooten and Gaskin on row two, then Marshall and Burmester on row three. Here we go. And 12 laps. Oh, Wooten getting pushed sideways down the track. Gaskin, oh, a bad, a big rollover for Richard Gaskin. Uh, sorry, uh, that is Paul Gaskin. Whoa. That was three times over side to side, so uh, big roll over there. That, yeah, that was a biggie. Um, started with the Wooten car being pushed sideways down the track. He's moving in there, chatting. Bit of sand over some leaked oil. So those uh, watching through the stream, we are able to bring you a replay. So there we see, yeah, so it's, it was it was Wooten being pushed sideways down the straight. Burmester and Gaskin involved. And Burmester eased off a wee bit, which Gaskin was then slowly, almost about to start straightening Wooten, but his car just jumped up over the front and again with the pace yep. uh, that he was moving. You just knew that that was going to start <laughs> happening there. Uh, so he, we got another, we got another angle that we'll take a look at on the replay uh, from the front. His car's jumping here, just bites in there, yeah. and and then Burmester almost does the same. It's almost like he could have gone either way. He could have just gone up and over and yep. straight off, or it just happened to be that it dug in and yep, exactly went for flying. Hey, if I can jump right in uh, while about, you guys are we're on about the go, so we'll come we'll come to your student straight after this one. So James Clark. Is your race leader. Marshall looks up the inside of Logan Nicholson, maybe. Then it's Brendan Ty. He gets into the side of the five. And that's let uh, Tyler James come into the action. Running up in fifth place. He's got his race goggles on this time. Uh, as opposed to the stirring goggles. Oh, big bumper there from Ross Ashby. Trying to get the 15 car of... Uh, Paul may be out of the road. Good to see Jacob Buckrell back out there in the 99 after his earlier rollover. Tom Cooper and Logan Nicholson maybe come together. Oh, Paul maybe had a big shot at Ross Ashby. Looking for a bit of payback there. Still James Clark, who is your race leader in 29G. From the 57V of Dylan Marshall. I think Tyler James has just moved up on Brendan Ty. Yes, he has. Looks to put the bumper in as well, down into the turn. Ross Ashby on the GP champion. Tim Ross didn't work for the 38 car, though. And he ends up dropping a couple. Problems for Matt Jarvis in the 79. He's crawling the concrete wall and then down the main straight. Oh, round goes. Ty, some of our race leaders up there. Brendan Ty was running in fourth place. Spins it up. That affects Cody Chatfield and also Ross Ashby. So from fourth, sixth and ninth. Let's see where those three end up after that incident.
So they end up way down the field in 14th, 17th and 19th. So looking for our race leader. Here it comes under the start finish line now, the 29 of James Clark. Round turn two onto the main straight, the Gisbonites makes the pass on James Buckrell. He's got a buffer over Dylan Marshall in the 57. And then likewise a bit of a buffer back to Tim Ross and Tyler James, the two Gisbonites. In fact, look at this, we, we talked about those Gisborn cars in the repercharge. Here they are coming to the four again. You've got Gisborn running one, three and four, and six in this heat. Heat one, the Lightning Concrete Tier Two Championship here at Huntley Speedway. Ross Ashby and Tom Hughes running it wide. There's your race leader looking up the inside of Cody Chatfield in the 741. And he should get the chicken flag here to take the win, and he does. Oh, Daniel Burmester with a pass there on Tom Cooper coming off turn four for the last time. Nice and smooth from the Palmerston North. Puma and Panther. So let's confirm your provisional top 10. James Clark, 29G, takes the win from 57V, Dylan Marshall. Then 144, Tim Ross, 89G, Tyler James, and 141S, Lance Mitchell, rounds out the top five. Then it was 172P, Daniel Burmester, 85G, Tom Cooper, 15R, Paul Maybe, 95A, Gary Lonigan, and 99S, Blake Adamson, your top 10. In the first heat of the Lightning Concrete Tier 2 competition. All right, so uh, we'll go back to Barry. He's got some... He's had that race to be head down in the figures and the numbers and the moves and the changes and the analysis of heat number one of the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstock Championship. And uh, what do you got for us, Barry? Well, apart from having to jump up and look at the replays of the rollovers, <laughs> man, that was pretty spectacular. It was. Yeah, so looking through it, um, yeah, we picked out pretty quickly the two big movers, and uh, by pure chance it was the two that I remarked on right at the start. The 81R Damien Orr, all the way up from grid 26 up to 11, so plus 15. The 198R was plus 12. And the next best we had, yeah, was the, um, the 5G. Josh Prentice. Yeah, Josh Prentice uh, started from grid 18 and came up to 7th, so he was plus 11. And Todd Hemingway in the 99M was plus 9. So they were they were your, your four biggest movers. Just look at some of those that you would have expected to move the long way and, and didn't. The 127G of Ethan Reese started 5th and finished 5th. The 1NZ of Ashery started 12th and did make its way up to six, so he, he was plus six spots. Um, Peter Reese started sixth and went back to eighth. And uh, a couple of the really was out there, Sam Hughes in the 77G went backwards 11 spots, and poor old Brett Nichols in the 48N back 19 spots. And man, when you go backwards 19 spots, and the car that's moved the far furthest forward is uh, plus 15, that's 34 points you've got to make up somewhere. Um, when there's only 26 points to win a heat, so that puts you a long, long way off the pace if you go uh, too far backwards in your first heat. So we'll go and uh, find out surely whether that race is official or not, so we can go through it top to bottom, but it's just confirming the guys that have made all the big moves.
Anderton Decorators are a long established Canterbury company covering the whole of the South Island who love to support their local community. If you require expert advice from design to application, then Shane has the expert team to ensure your next project is hassle free with a professional finish. Floor to ceilings, walls to roof, inside outside, commercial or residential. Let our team take the hassle out of your decorating. Give us a call now on 027 Painting. That's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators, we have you covered. All right, here we go. Cars are coming out for the advanced joinery tier three competition. Paul Vasey out the pit gate, Philip Gargan following him, and uh, we hand over to Craig Tonkin to look after the advanced joinery tier three. Yeah, well, uh, oh, tier three is coming. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Well, tier three is coming out. I might as well give you an update on what's yes. happening with uh, the New Zealand champs. So, basically, uh, looking at Trent James' car, he's done the left rear brake. Uh, Kalen Mooney's actually working hard on that car, the 56 car. There's a lot of work going down here at the Rees cars. And, the uh, gear set's changing. A lot of drivers, not a bit, of, not a lot of damage, but a lot of drivers chasing the track. Uh, gear set's being changed. Every car is up on stands. So Every car around the pits is up on stands with uh, tyres coming out, tape measures. Um, they've got these wheel, not spaces, but uh, obviously setups going on. A couple of are on scales. It's uh, it's actually all go down here, and there's just they just said there's no, there's no drive. Yeah, look, they, and, and I think that's it, eh, Stu, because Matty Wise mentioned it in his interview about how the track changed throughout the race, and he just saw it going blacker and blacker. Yeah. And and Barry's highlighted some of these drivers who you expect to make gains through the field, and some of them didn't. Um, it's just caught a few of them out, and you're right, they're they're just chasing it now. Yeah, they certainly are, and uh, as I say, a lot of them are throwing fresh rubber each race at those right rears, especially to try and keep that drive down to put that uh, that fresh stuff on the track and of course as that burns off it just blackens the track off doesn't it slickens it out for everyone but uh, yeah it's it's all go down here but no damage just a lot of tyre changing a lot of gear set changing and uh, the old Jurometers. Good as gold thanks for the update on that so as we say going into the advanced joinery tier 3 heat 2 so uh, some great insight there to what's happening in the pits as we as we're watching the racing but uh, Interesting that the uh, the track is, is changing so much after each lap. So, um, but you can see it from your point of view, the, the track just getting blacker, blacker. Obviously, that's more rubber going down, changing the way that it feels under under the wheels for the for the drivers. Just watching as the uh, the last car, the 717 of uh, Tyson Wooten coming out. So, uh, gates are shutting up. We're going to be kicking off underway to uh, to get into this. As say, Heat 2, Tier 3, Advanced Joinery. So uh, just a great time to quickly grab some food and drink while you're waiting for them to uh, to get up and get underway. Obviously plenty of, plenty of that around the track. And as you can see for those on the on the live streaming, just the last cars coming into place, a few little gaps appearing in the in the grid. Obviously guys that have got uh, a little bit too much damage, can't make it out for this race. But as I say, gates are shut. Everything's getting set up, ready to get underway. At 10 laps. Last minute checks, the uh, official's still on the track. Just pulling off now, revs coming up. Looking good. In the hands of the starter. We are racing, we are green. Straight into it, the 33 yards, Robbie Mabey straight out into the lead, but running wide, safely through turn one and two, kicking the race off nicely, Robbie Mabey, drop, Rob, Robbie Mabey drops back to second place, Brent Kelly, the 461, making a nice pass, coming out of turn two, taking the lead, Robbie Mabey in second place, Mike Hodnick, 274R in third, cars still three, four cars wide through one and two, one car coming out of turn one on the, on the inside, but safely underway. Two laps down, eight to go. Kelly, maybe Steiner, Honek, McConchie in your top five. Bit of pressure coming on to onto Brett Kelly. Robbie maybe looking either way to, to make the pass, looking on the inside, looking on the outside, but he's got pressure himself. By the name of Bryce Steiner, 118R, right on his tail, throw a, uh, a napkin over the top three, then there's a bit of a gap back to uh, 
fourth place, but contact straight into the wall. Robbie may be putting, pushing Britt Kelly wide. Britt manages to hold off, and in fact, Robbie maybe moves back a bit, but underway, under chase again. Coming down the back straight, looking straight into it. Kelly, maybe Steiner, Walker, and Honig in your top five. Five laps down, five to go, midway through the race. Big pass on the inside now. Bryce Steiner looks like he's made the pass, made it past Robbie maybe and Brett Kelly. Fantastic pass, fantastic manoeuvre there to take the lead. 1-1-8-R, Bryce Steiner first place, Brett Kelly back into second place, Robbie maybe back into third. Seth McConchie still in fourth and Mike Honig in fifth place. Fantastic pass coming up to take that, but uh, the other's trying to fight back into it. Steiner up front, coming into a bit of lap traffic, which could uh, pose some issues, but no, straight on down on the inside, straight underneath the uh, Regan McKenzie 49M. Coming down on the back, on the front straight, eight down, two to go. Contact down on turn one and two, that's going to, cars are all underway, but it's going to slow up the traffic. 461 parked up on the infield here. Still under green, still racing. Coming down to get the white flag, one to go. Bryce Steiner, your race leader, 118, coming through turn one and two. Bit of flare up on one and two, gone red. Just trying to get that car going up red, underway again. That looks like the 717, Dan Pollock. Managed to get it fired and moved out of the way, but uh, a little bit of flames coming out of there, so the safety crew keep it a, a close eye on that. But uh, just a heads up, Luke Irvine's in the 33 car, not um, Robbie. Maybe I just noticed the helmet. <laughs> awesome, thanks for that. That's good to know, Luke Irvine. So uh, as I say, nine laps down, we're on white flag, but we have gone red, so we'll kick it off for a, a one one lap down. sprint or half lap sprint. One more eight. Bryce Steiner is your race leader. All about him coming down to take the take the check it and he does. 118 R, Bryce Steiner, race leader, Paul Vasey, 351 R in second place. Tyler Walker, 113 yes from Stratford, Mike Honeck, 274 R in fourth place, Seth McConchie in fifth. Then we go down to sixes, Carl Pegg, McCarthy, maybe Chapman and Halloway running out your top ten. Then we've got uh, Brett Kelly, Philip Gargan, Thomas Slater. David Hunter, Bunce, Marsh. Just looking on the screen now, so yet confirmed that Bryce Steiner is your race leader. Paul Vasey in second place. Tyler Walker, third. Mike Honek, Seth McConchie, 272M. Carl Pegg in sixth place. Seventh place, Mike McCarthy in the 888P car. Robbie Maybe, 33R in eighth. Hayden Chapman, 247A in ninth. And Max Halloway rounding out the top 10. So that's how we're looking for, for that race. That was Heat 2, race 9 of the Advanced Joinery Tier 3. Of course, a uh, slight change to the program. We've got stock cars up next. Looks like we've just come up with a bit of an update. Uh, yeah, so uh, still no official results yet. So what have, what have we had? We've had two races since the final. No yep. official results yet. Okay. Um, Barry and I have just been chatting and, and speculating uh, mm -hmm. about what that may mean. Um, but obviously, look, there's, there's a, it's a very quick turnaround, isn't it? Look, we're talking stock cars now, then we're up with uh, the final again. So what they've decided to do, the stock cars, we saw them out there, massive field, wasn't it? Yep. So they're going to split the, that field into two groups. Okay. Um, so we'll have two stock car groups. So that just kind of helps ease the time pressures that are on. Uh, well, everybody, I suppose, from the officials to get those updates, um, for us to get those, to then get them out to everybody who's wanting to make note and follow things. Likewise with the drivers um, for repairs, changes to their cars, and those all-important meetings in the back of trailers uh, between <laughs> heats two and three to let that kind of unfold once uh, people have had the chance to look at points. So, uh, so yeah, so that's been split across. I'm not, I don't know whether we're having stock cars group one and then stock cars group two. We'll just wait and see how that unfolds. At the moment, we take a look, and there's uh, not a lot happening there on the dummy grid. So we. 
Uh, well, the stock cars are up the far end of the uh, paddock anyway, aren't yeah. they? So yep, out the side. <laughs> they're out that side. <laughs> I, so I'll, never, I'll never get used to that, I don't think. You know, it's not like I commentate here every week, but you know, done a few over the years, and I'll never get used to the fact that there's, uh, there's actually three different dummy grids here, isn't there? There's, there's, there's the one up that end of that pit gate, then there's one right behind race control, and then there's also another one which is down in the other pit chute. Depending on which cars are coming off the track and which direction they need to head, there's three dummy grids. Don't want to make it too easy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell you, I, I need it to be easy, believe me. Uh, right. Okay. okay. All right. Roof's coming up. Engine's coming up. Gates are shut. Everyone's looking happy. We are racing. We are green. Clinton hard on the brakes, holding people up to let others go, but... Coming round wide, round one and two to uh, to take the lead at the moment. Cars all over the place. Thank you. But uh, Larry Henderson, car number eight on the inside, having to pick up the inside, trying to make the pass on on the uh, the 45 of Matthew Shaw. So we've got uh, Matthew Shaw, Larry Henderson, Jaden Dredd and Manning in your top three. Larry running wide, opening the door to let Jaden on the inside, and he takes it. Meanwhile, we've got a bit of contact into turn two. Just while 25 is trying to get uh, get back off the track. But your race leader, Matthew Shaw, 45H. Up front, Jaden Dredding, Manning, 32 in second place. Larry Henderson, car number eight in third. Callum McLeod, 33 in fourth. And Clinton Cheatham, 361, running at your top five. 33, Callum McLeod having a spin out of turn two, so that's dropped him back a little bit on that. Larry Henderson coming around past some lap traffic. And nicely spun. Jaden Dredden Manning takes the spin on Larry, spins him around and makes the pass. Larry parked up down the back straight, facing the wrong way, trying to get the car fight up underway, and he does. Pulls off into the infield, sorts himself out, but Jaden Dredden Manning, four laps down, eight to go. That's your race leader, 32, coming down the back straight now. Is Larry trying to get in the way, or was Larry looking for a little bit of payback, possibly? Who knows? Keep an eye on those two, but Jaden Dredden manages your race leader. And uh, Larry Henderson's dropping back to 10th. So five laps down, seven to go. Jaden coming down the back straight. Got a contact into the back of Larry, just let him, let him know that he's there. Spinning himself out in the process doing so, so not ideal for Jaden. Larry will be happy with that, so Jaden just t get around back onto the track, back underway. Still managing to hold on first place, 32. Second place, 79, Norman Anderson. Meanwhile, we've got car number 17 parked up. Kristen Vermeulen underway again, so we're still green, still racing. Coming around to take lap seven, seven, lap seven down, five to go. 32 of Dreda Manning in first place. Luke Ross, 57 in second. And Norman Anderson in third. Looking down on turn four, there's a bit of uh, push starting going on, I think. Clinton uh, Cheatham, 361, just uh, slowing down the, uh, the 68 of Bevan Nielsen. Luke Ross making the pass on Jaden, so currently taking the, taking the lead. 57, Luke Ross, first place. Jaden down to second place. And then, of course, Matthew Shaw, 45H, in third. Bit of action going down on turn four. A little bit of stirring, I think, there from uh, Clinton in the 361. And the 17 of Kristen Vermeulen. Keeping on Larry working his way through in the eight, just taking the spin on to 17. Spinning Kristen round. Clinton's holding Larry up, letting the others pass. Having a few little conversations around here, but... 10 laps down, two to go as the 79 comes round. So we've been passed by the 45 of Matthew Shaw, but we have gone red. Looking at... Yeah, going over to check on, uh, on the cars parked up over there. Can't quite see the cars with the safety crew on who it is, but uh, obviously issues there. So checking on the, on the drivers. So running through, we've got 45, Matthew Shaw in first place. 79, Norman Anderson in second, Greg Kapkanine, 14H in third.
Jalen Dredd Manning in fourth and Bevan Neil Nielsen in the fifth place. All right, just jumping in there, Craig, we have right. official results from heat one of the New Zealand Superstock Championships. So get your pens and papers ready. We will run through those official results from heat one immediately following this uh, heat of the stock cars. Page 33 on your program if you're here at the track. Awesome, thank you for that. Finally got some, some official results, so that's always a good thing, but uh, you're still just checking on the driver. That's actually failing at the moment. Lights out. But, uh, pretty much all the cars are on turn one and two, but we're green, we're racing back into it. Matthew Shaw coming around through three and four now. He'll be coming down to get the white flag. White flagged out, one to go. Coming around down the back straight. Bit of slower traffic trying to hold him up. Nicely passed through there with a bit of blocking and a bit of assistance. Matthew coming around out of turn four to take the checker flag. He's going to look at it, he's going to get it. 45H, Matthew Shaw, first place. Nicely done in there. Then uh, looking at second place, 79 of Norman Anderson. And third place, Ethan Edinburgh, 43H. So that's your top three. So uh, look, quite a bit of carnage in that race and a uh, little bit of blocking and assistance from certain people. Larry Henderson, car number eight, just coming over to, uh, to complete the race. But uh, definitely some, uh, some scores to be settled in that race, I think it was. So... How are we looking with these uh, official results? We've got Barry on board. Just get himself sorted. I no, just need to get it nice and quiet out, <laughs> out there. Oh, pardon me. Um, right, starting from the top of the page in the uh, numerical order of the cars as we read them out at the beginning of the meeting. So I'll give you the number, the name, the heat one position, and the points. So it's 1NZ Asher Reese. Position 6, points 21. 4K Chad Ace, position 25, points 2. 5M Elias Dykstra, position 18, points 9. 5G Josh Prentice, position 7, points 20. 9G Jamie Hamilton, position 17, points 10. 10G Peter Rees, 8th place, 19 points. 16B Brett Loveridge, 23rd place, 4 points. 19M Kerry Remnant, 20th place, 7 points. 22W Richard Gaskin, 16th place, 11 points. 34P Rebecca Barr, did not finish, 0. 46B Quinn Ryan, 2nd place, 25 points. 48 in Brett Nichols, 22nd place, 5 points. 56 V Trent James, 10th place, 17 points. 66 A Randall Tarrant, 9th place, 18 points. 75 K Gavin Tanifar, 3rd place, 24 points. 77 G Sam Hughes, 15th place, 12 points. 81R Damien Orr, 11th place, 16 points. 82S Hamish Booker, 19th place, 8 points. 127G Ethan Rees, 5th place, 22 points. 132P, uh, 136P, sorry, Maddie Wise, 1st place, 26 points. 147K, Matt Nielsen, 24th place, 3 points. 198R, Mark Costello, 12th place, 15 points. 307K, Matthew Pickard, 21st place, 6 points. 422R, Dylan Ashton, 14th place, 13 points. 7R, Mick Rumney, 13th place, 14 points. And finally, 99M, Todd Hemingway, 4th place, 23 points. So we've already been through the uh, the biggest movers there, the guys that, uh, some of the, the top names that went backwards, some that didn't go anywhere. 
Uh, the two that have certainly made the biggest move so far is the 198R of Mark Costello and the 81R of Damien Orr. We're having to hold Paul Hickey down on the commentary box here, Rotorua cars first and second uh, in the big moves at the moment. But uh, of course they've still got to carry that on through with uh, a good run in the second two heats. But yeah, if you can come from around grid 24, grid 26, and I've sort of said if they're somewhere around the top 10, whether they're 11th and 12th, that's, that's about the best you can expect, I think, isn't it, Paul, out of a uh, first heat run for the back of the grid? Yeah, it is. And, and look, that's what you've got to do from the back of the grid. But the, yeah. thing, is, the thing is now, they've, they've done that, but there are going to be other drivers who are now also going to have the chance to do that in heat two and heat three. Yes. Um, so, you know, and, and that's how it all ends up at the end. But, but the thing is... I, I, I look at it in the opening heat. That's your opportunity to do it best because if you're starting down, so, so let's take Matty Wise, for example, and Quinn Ryan started on the front row. They've won the race, yes. like first and second. In the next race, they start maybe mid-pack. And if they do okay, if they pick up five or six places, and he, so just think Matty Wise is on grid 14, uh, Quinn Ryan, um, is starting on grid 15. Yes. So if they pick up five or six places, that's going to be like a first and a ninth and a second and a tenth. Then they're starting down the back. They're already going to be right up there leading on points, so people are going to be looking for them already and have to make their way all the way through the pack. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, pros and cons both ways, but, but that's it. You know, those are great moves, and um, yeah, I'm super happy uh, that, yeah, that those two to do cars, great start. For Mark Costello and Damien Orr, it's been uh, been a while. Kyle Fraser, when he won in Wanganui in 2009, yes. yep. that was the last time that uh, we had a one tour or three on a Rotorua Super Stock. All right, uh, stock cars are about set, so we'll hand over to Craig shortly, maybe, or he's just uh, fiddling with some electric stuff here, which we've got a, a few of. Uh, here in the commentary oh, box. Oh, he's going to try and get me a lamp. He's so going to get you a lamp. I was going to make my own points up. <laughs> 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 All right, stock cars. Uh, group number two. As we said, we split them up. Uh, gives us a little bit of extra time. And over to Craig as they go racing. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Straight into it. Green lights. We're racing. So, uh, part two of the stock cars. Coming round all clear through one and two. First lap looking safe. Car number eight, Logan Peake, well and truly out in front. Running wide, but uh, daylight for him at the moment. Michael Rowe in second place. Josh Humble, 4H in third. Bit of a spin out down in uh, turn four, but they've got themselves all sorted underway. So Shane White of 72 being the, uh, the uh, victim from that one, but two laps down. 10 to go, Logan Pete, Michael Rowe, Samuel Van Amsterdam, Keegan All, Josh Humble in your top five. And as I say, quite a, quite a gap uh, separating the, the top, top three cars at the moment. So positioning still staying the same, but further down the field is where the action's happening at the moment. With the, uh, the car number 87 of Nevin Shrub, dropping down one position. Gemma Holloway making a nice pass on there. Four laps down, eight to go. Up front, we're still looking at Pete, Rowe, Van Amsterdam, and Keegan Orr, Ali Van Amsterdam in your top five. And of course, going back downfield, you've got the likes of Ryan Aiken, 18 and ninth. Josh Humble dropping down to 10th. But cars flying 8A, top of the point, Logan Pete. Shows us how it's done at the moment. Leading from go to well on this one. The 87 of Nevin Shrub, putting up a valid effort, but been passed on the outside through turn one and two, pushed into the wall. Tried to take him over there, but has managed to uh, keep, keep himself on all four wheels. Logan Pete, still your race leader. Midway through the race, six down, six to go. Seven laps down. The 142 R of Alex Young coming just over the start finish line now, having a bit of a battle through one and two. 
making a nice pass on the inside. Made it look easy in the end. Eight laps down. Keegan will making the pass on row to come up to second place. Mock row down to third. Ali Van Amsterdam up into fourth place, but coming around nine laps down. Three to go. Race leader by Country Mile at the moment of Ade and Logan Pete. But involved in a, uh, a contact down the back straight, which will slow him up a little bit. But uh, nothing to be too concerned about there, I don't think. The uh, number four of Josh Humble just uh, slowing Logan down, causing a bit of a blocking. But Logan gets, gets past down the back straight into turn three and four. Spins himself out, taps another car and parks it up down on three and four. So that is going to affect him. White flag out. One to go. Keegan Orr, 735R. Taking the lead. Logan Pete making the turn and getting underway, but has dropped down a lot of positions. That's it. Done and dusted. 67H, Michael Rowe. Oh, big contact into the into the wall. Just on the on the start finish line for 18H. Huge big contact into the wall with Darren Prentice. Bit of frontal damage there, all the front wheels locked up nice and tight. Trying to turn out as much as you can, but going through the results. So the first place was Michael Rowe, 67H, Keegan Orr, 735 in second, Ali Van Amsterdam, car number 51A in third, Gemma Holloway, 14B in fourth, fifth place, Alex Young. 142R, then we've got 6th place, Ryan Atkin, Logan Pete in 7th, Daniel Prentice in 8th, Samuel Van Amsterdam 9th, and Shane White ran out your top 10. We've got Humble, Shrub and Prentice with uh, the 76H and the 86K not finishing that. So that's how it's going to finish itself up here for the stock cars. And a uh, yeah, stunning, stunning finish for uh, for 18. It's... Um, yeah, a bit of, bit of frontal damage there as he hits the wall real hard side on. Quite impressive to how he managed to do that, but a uh, big round of applause as, uh, as Michael comes around with the, with the flag. Another great uh, great battle driven for Michael to, to manage to bring that out victorious as the cars leave the track. So we should be heading back to the Tier 1. They'll be up next, so uh, looking out, yep, can see them on one of the dummy grids. One of the three that we've got lined up. <laughs> so great time now, just while we're getting the cars off the track, if you're feeling a bit peckish, but thirsty, plenty of food and uh, refreshments around the track. You don't want to miss out any of the action coming up. Tier one up next, then two, and then tier three. So here we go, we can see the movement behind race control and the former New Zealand champion, Randall Tarrant, the winner. <laughs> and who will forget those celebrations in Wanganui at Ocean View Speedway after that amazing third heat uh, when he took the championship. He leads him out, he'll start this one on pole position. Rebecca Barr uh, follows him out. Then that, I love the graphics on Josh Prentice's car. A lot of chat about that. It's amazing, um, yeah, isn't it? It is. It really is. Here's Brett Loveridge. Uh, now, was his wing that high? I didn't notice how high that wing sits. It's like Graham Barr did that for a couple of years. That, well, I didn't notice it sitting that high in the earlier heats. Uh, the 16 of Loveridge. There's Brett Nichols. There's Red Wooten uh, in the water truck. <laughs> Let's take a look officially at how they line up. Heat 2 of the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstock Championship. So Randall Tarrant and Hamish Booker, uh, both finalists last time around in Rotorua as well, on the front row. Rebecca Barr on grid three. Richard Gaskin is there on grid number four. Then it is five and four. Josh Prentice and Chad Ace on grids five and six with Dylan Ashton and Jamie Hamilton, grids seven and eight. Row five, taken up by the 19M of Kerry Remnant and 16B, Brett Loveridge. On grid 11, Mark Costello, 198R, and Matt Pickard, 307K. Grid 13 for 81R, Damien Orr. Heat 1 winner, Matty Wise, starting on grid 14. Quinn Ryan, back on 15, and Brett Nichols. 
out of Nelson. The only South Island car in the finals is there on grid 16. Hughes and Rees on grids 17 and 18. Rees in the Ethan form. <laughs> Peter Rees, grid 19, uh, with Trent James, 56V, on grid 20. Gav Tunnifar and Michael Rumney on 21 and 22. Five M Elias Dykstra on grid 23 with Matt Nielsen, 147, on grid 24. And the back row, it is the 1NZ and the 99M Asher Rees and Todd Hemingway. So Todd Hemingway, he was uh, what third highest in the passing moves in that first heat. So if, if he could actually okay, get a toe I through from Asher Reeves in this one, so they've got Ethan and Peter ahead of them as well. Yep. He can tag well, onto the back of them. Not, not, a, ba not a bad person to tag yeah, on the back of, is it? I don't think so, no. <laughs> um, and, and you're right, so, so big move in that keep first race. And, and if he can then mirror out, okay? what we saw from Damien or Mark Costello mm. in the opening heat and end up around that kind of, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th place, uh, you know, that, that does set him up nicely. So just kind of looking there, Todd Hemingway. So we, it, where did he end up? So he went up nine spots. So he went up to four. Fourth, yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, have, 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 we, have we got an empty spot there? Just looking. Yeah. Behind we have. Dylan Ashton. One, three, five, seven, grid nine. Barry, if you can look at that. We are set to rock and roll. Kerry Remnant. Kerry Remnant missing. Okay, so we are one down. Here we go. Heat two, the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstock Championships for 2023. The cars are lined up. Wait for those revs, here they come and we are racing. Look out turn one, this could be different. Rebecca Barr gets fired in there first. We're a lot more bunched up through turn two this time. The sparks fly, we've got a couple running off the concrete wall into turn number three. And out wide they run, Loveridge is right out wide. Uh, so is Hughes, oh we got one up and over. We will go red, red and back quick red line, line, back on his wheels. He got a big, he rode on his side for a long time down the straight, Quinn Ryan. All right, so we're going to do a check yep. on the... They're going to check the cage here. Yeah. Quinn's given the thumbs up, the car's fired up. So just explain to us what's happening here, Stu. So our SNZ tech official, you can see in the orange there, he's just checking all safety components. The cage is fine. He's checked the steering is fine. All right, so this is where, in, in general rules, if you're the stop, if you're the cause of the stoppage and a red light, you get taken off. But the instant, or the instant um, red lights for a rollover is for safety reasons. Um, so we're just looking at the replays here, just got, that was quite unusual. The way he actually flipped up from the inside. Um, the way he went over, and yeah, got pushed along there for quite a while. So obviously you can see the damage. Yeah, he's, he's he does trying. have a, uh, Drop suspension in that right rear though. Okay, so drop suspension. All right, but, thank uh, you. He looks all right. They did check. Obviously, they check around the fluids and that as well. And that's all good. Right and you can down. see Quinn trying to lift the car forward here. Yes. All right. So Quinn Ryan is away. I think the right front tire is flat, unfortunately. All right. So let's look towards the front and see what's actually happening out here. It is Hamish Booker who's leading from Josh Prentice and then Randall Tarrant. We do have one who's pulled to the infield. I think it might be Hughes who's pulled to the infield. So the field split. Quinn Ryan, he, well, what will he do here? He's just going to pull off. He knows his game's over. Gutted for Quinn Ryan yeah, in the flat, 46. Flat right rear. Okay. All right, so Josh Prentice takes the lead now. Actually, I think both rear tyres might be flat. So Josh Prentice... Your leader. Oh, big push in there from Hamish Booker. And that kind of sends both Tarrant and Prentice White. Here's Damien Orr up into third place. The 81 R car. Richard Gaskin sideways along the uh, front straight. The pit straight, I should say. As Randall Tarrant gives Josh Prentice a big hurry up. Coming off turn three. Then it's Orr and Hamish Booker. Three wide coming off turn four. Rebecca Barr, Trent James and Matt Nielsen as they continue to run hard at the front here comes Damien Orr looks up the inside to move up into second place behind Prentice just inching his way forward the 81 looking nice and smooth then it's back to uh, Hamish Booker Asher Rees, Dylan Ashton and Mark Costello no, well, somebody's gone around down in uh, turn one and two I think that might have been uh, Trent James so now the 1NZ, 
Oh, Asher, Ethan Rees, little half spin, and he ends up being fixed up and corrected there by Jamie Hamilton, I think it was. That was almost over for Ethan Rees in the 127. Looking here for Todd Hemingway, hasn't made those big gains, uh, sitting on in 13th place at the moment. Big puff of smoke. Uh, that's from the Chad Ace number four car, I think it was. He's pulled off onto the infield. Out the front, it is still the uh, number five, who's your race leader, from 81 and 66. We are nine laps gone, six to go. So they've really kind of settled themselves into a few little battle packs here. Oh, who's this right? Somebody's riding up over the top there. Manages to come down. That was Gav Tunifar. All up over the top of, I think it might have been Asher Rees. Uh, Peter Rees it was. So that's dropped Peter Rees back down the pack. He's dropped down to 16th place in the 10p. All right. Four laps to go. Battle between the 1NZ and the 9G. Hamilton not yielding. Here comes. They are three wide down into the turn. Mark Costello puts the bumper in to try and force his way through. It's Hamilton who leads this bunch through. It's the two Rees brothers and Mark Costello are there as well. Oh, Costello takes a bump from the 1NZ. Sends him wide, but that's caused some problems for the 127 as well. Great battle between these three. And they are battling over 6th, 7th and 8th place. It'll be white flag next time around. For the 5G, down the main straight he goes. Heading towards turn number three. The important last couple of laps. This is where you can make up some points. No give, no take. Put the bumper in. If you can pass one car, if you can pass two cars, that makes the difference. White flag out for the race leader. Who's going to make some big moves here? Somebody's just been forced wide. Hamish Booker's lost a couple of spots. Asher Rees, the 1NZ, he could pick up a couple here as he looks to dive underneath Jamie Hamilton. Makes the pass. Hamilton holding on though. Rees takes him wide. Hamilton has to ease off the gas. Rees made two points in that last lap. Big move from the defending champion. Josh Prentice takes the race win. We will get some points for you in a moment. What a race. Hard and fast. Josh Prentice, 5G, takes the win. Ahead of 81R, Damien Orr. These are provisional. 66A, Randall Tarrant in third place. Then in fourth, 1NZ, Asher Rees. 9G, Jamie Hamilton rounds out the top five. Hamish Booker recovered nicely from that last lap. Bar push wide, home in sixth place. From the 127G of Ethan Rees. 198R, Mark Costello in eighth. 99M, Todd Hemingway in ninth. Rounding out the top ten, Dylan Ashton. We then looked at 5M Elias Dykstra, 10G Peter Rees in 12th. 75K Gavin Tunnifar, Heat 1 winner Maddie Wise couldn't make him into any ground. Started 14, finished 14 in 136P. Then 16B Brett Loveridge, 147 Matt Nielsen, Michael Rumney, Brett Nichols, Rebecca Barr and Trent James to round out the 20. Right Barry Brown, you've got the point scoring in front of you. How does it look after two? Right, Josh Prentice, now your points leader with that Heat win, 46 points to the 5G of Josh Prentice, and he is off grid 17 in the last heat. Yep. Two points behind, he was four points behind till the last corner. The extra two points that Asher Rees picked up, he's on 44 points, and Asher Rees is on grid four, four. in the final. Wow. So, uh, and that extra two points, hello. That's big, isn't it? All right. Just taking the screen off me, but Ethan Reese was two points further back. Him and Asher going into the last lap were equal. Yep. But yeah, Asher gained those extra two. Uh, Ethan and Ethan starting down on grid 18. Yeah. So at the moment, Asher Reese is sitting in a pretty tidy place. All right. Obviously, he's going to be a target. I'm just going to have yeah, to well, get okay. that screen yep, back. You bring that screen back up. So, um, so yeah, Josh Prentice, points leader, starting on grid 17. Uh, but yeah, two points ahead of Asher Rees, but Rees starting on grid four. We'll, we'll get some more for you in a moment. So, so while Josh Prentice is two points ahead, the moment the green flag drops, um, Asher Rees, by being 13 positions ahead, is actually nine points ahead straight off the bat. Um, but 
Asher Reeves can only pick up three more positions, whereas Josh Prentice can potentially move forward 16. Um, so we're taking in some of the highlights, that opening lapper and that mega rollover uh, and push through from Quinn Ryan. Still couldn't quite pick out who it was there that was doing the pushing. Okay, um, so back to you, Barry. So we we go Prentice, Rees, Rees. Uh, Rees equal of 42 points. Ethan Rees, that is. Yep. With uh, Randall Tarrant. Who starts off grid number 25. So he's right down the back. So they're on 42 points each. Yep. And then on 41 points, we yep. have 81 uh, Damien Orr, who will be up the front. Starting on pole position. And 99M Todd Hemingway. Uh, sorry, he's right down the I didn't have his grids, the Ripper Charge grids uh, there, sorry. Okay, so, um, duh. Th two. Two for the last heat. So Todd Hemingway sitting fifth equal. Yep. Only five points off the lead. He's got a grid two, so him and Asher Reese are the two sitting up the front. Uh, Damien Orr. And Damien Orr, so, yeah. So we, we, we traditionally, Barry, we always look at the top six. Yep. Um, but what, what's happening down in seventh, just to check here, because uh, it Matt, can happen. Matty Wise is um, on 39, so two points behind Hemingway. Yeah, and he, but he's right on grid, he's on grid 26. He's got a lot of work yeah, to do. So I think it does come down to those top six, doesn't and it? There's, there's only one other one actually in the ballpark up there, 75K, Gavin Tanifar. Yeah. Where is he in heat three? Uh, 12. Okay, and he's on 38 points. Yeah. So he's eight points off the lead and in the middle of the pack. So I would say, yeah, probably the top six. We've got three of them up near the front of the grid and three down the back of the grid. at uh, Wholesale Tyres in Whakatane. Need truck tyres? Wholesale tyres. Good tyres, better prices, great people. What you think you do with your four-wheel drive? What you actually do with your four-wheel drive? No matter what you do with your four-wheel drive, we've got the right tyre for you. So come on down to Mag and Turbo. Hey Josh, I don't know about you, but I cannot wipe the smile off my face. I don't even know how I'm going to get through this interview. That was electric. You literally just found your pace halfway through and nobody, not one single car could catch you. Yeah, well, that was my front grid, so I knew I had to make it count. And uh, nah, stoked with the win, but we've got one more heat to go and we'll just see how we go. And that final third heat is always the one that just... All right, we've lost it. Uh, we've... Lost Bianca, so we look at the race and uh, see if we might go back to Josh Penders, but obviously he'll be wanting to uh, focus on the race. This is the Lightning Concrete Tier 2 competition. So this is the third heat, third race tonight for these guys. Uh, they raced in the Reaper Charge, remember, and then uh, we then get into this championship uh, for these guys. James Clark is the leader. I think he won that second heat, uh, the first heat of this group. So shining out straight off the bat. James Clark in the 29G. One circulating down there towards the back uh, with some issues, and that is uh, Tim Ross. Uh, he would come into this weekend, Tim Ross, with plenty of high hopes after winning the New Zealand Grand Prix um, last weekend, last Sunday in Auckland. But just nothing's gone his way this week. Looks as though we've had referee sign off uh, on the second heat. And they are happy with that. So we will get points to you as soon as we've got that all sorted. 10 minutes. Yep. Oh, so, okay, we haven't gone the 10 minutes yet, so we will wait on that. So James Clark, your race leader, Brendan Ty, sitting in second, Zane Dykstra and Dylan Marshall. Next on track as Dykstra puts the bumper in there to Brendan Ty and moves up into second place. Oh, around goes uh, James in the 89. So still James Clark, five laps into it. 29. Round into turn three. Is your race leader. So this is tier two, thanks to Lightning Concrete. Advanced joinery sponsoring our tier three competition. And of course, Pollock Cranes. Now, 
main sponsor this weekend at the New Zealand Superstock Championships. Oh, a couple come together down there, and I think it might be Paul, maybe, and uh, Lance Mitchell in turn two. So they're well spread around the circuit here at Huntley International Speedway. A little bit of bumper work going on down in turn four there. Round into turn two, Logan Nicholson maybe the five car leading that little bunch. Gets a tap on the inside. That's from Brody James. Zane Dykstra sitting in behind, kind of going, I'm waiting for my moment here. So this is the uh, battle. It's right down. This is uh, the battle for 15th, 16th, 17th and 18th in our 18 car field uh, at the moment. But further forward, they're all kind of settled in nicely into their uh, particular spots. Here's Brendan Ty. He's dropped back into fifth place. So we head back to focusing on this battle between the car from Rotorua, two from Wanganui in there, and one from Gisborne. Nicholson maybe a little bit of a nudge out of the way from Zane Dykstra. Dylan Marshall, he gets the benefit there and well almost picks up two spots and the chequered flag is out. James Clark has picked up the win. And we've got one sitting stranded around uh, in turn three and four. Can't quite make out who that is. I think it might be the 71H of Tony Wooten. And he's dropped right down the field. Was running in ninth place. Uh, but he's going to end up with a DNF. So, James Clark, 29G, takes the win from 38V, Zane Dykstra. Uh, Dylan Marshall, 57V. Oh, so those guys were uh, battling together and amongst the back markers there too. That's second and third. Then Tom Cooper, Brendan Ty to round out the five. Daniel Burmester, 172P in sixth. Gary Lonigan and Jamie Ferguson, the two Auckland boys, 95 and 96 in seventh and eighth. Uh, ninth place will be the 99S of Blake Adamson. And then Cody Chatfield, 741A, uh, rounds out the top 10. Those are provisional results. James Clark with the fastest lap. Now, I'm not sure, uh, Barry, whether we're going to... Oh, so at least I don't know whether we're going to head back to the pits or not. We will wait on we are. OK, we're going to head down. Uh, we're going to very shortly, we will uh, head to the pits, then we'll get Barry with some uh, of his analysis from the uh, opening, uh, from the second heat of the Pollock Cranes Superstock Championships. Right, uh, another one of the big movers in that uh, first two heats, and he finished second in the second heat, the 81R of Damien Orr. Hey guys, so I'm right down the very end of the pits with Damien Orr. He was very, very lucky to come away with the second place in his last heat. You've so far managed an 11 and a second. And oh my gosh, he's off pole in the third. Yeah, and um, I just can't wait to get that third race over and done with and, and, and see where I end up, you know. It's been a while since we've been in this kind of um, situation and it actually feels really good to know we're right there. Or oh, I don't, haven't seen the points yet, but right there. And I mean that track looks so quick tonight. Josh Prince of course took the win. Nobody could catch in, but you weren't too far off. No, I was knocking right on Josh's door and you know, I wasn't a threat to him. We're good mates and we go way back and you know, we race side by side until until we probably pass away and that's the way we want it all the time. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um tell us, have you got any damage on the car? Does it look like it or is there any new changes to the set uh, you set up for the third and final? Uh, I changed it quite drastically on that one to go out in that one, and uh, that track's not going to get any worse. It's not going to get any um, yeah any worse. So we'll just leave it how it is. I'm going to dial in a little bit more drive off the turns. That's about it. Yeah. Hey mate, going off pole. We wish you all the luck. Uh, you're right up there for contention. So I don't want to jinx it, but hey, go hard. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, eh? Cheers, Dame. <laughs> Cheers, Dame. Uh, yeah, one of the characters too of uh, Speedway, Damien Orr from Rotorua. So, uh, firstly, just we, we talked about the, the size of the pits here at Huntley Speedway, and Damien Orr is part right down the far end, so just a little bit glitchy uh, in that reception from down there. Uh, but he, we can confirm, I think, that he's sitting in fifth place on points. He is five points behind the leader. 
uh, but starting up there on a pole position. So that's it. These, we, we um, all of us, sitting here in the stadium, watching the live stream, a bit more informed than the drivers at the moment, which is nice, isn't it? How about that? I'll tell you what, it's hard to actually get a word out of some of these drivers. They're so focused on uh, the next heat. It's, I'm just trying to see if there's any, as Minty would say, barbecues going on. Yep. And actually there's not, because everyone's too busy trying to get their own cars working. They're, they're still fighting the track. Matt yes. Nielsen's got no brakes. Um, Matt Pickard, he pulled off in that race. He actually just lost the muffler, but he thought there was something wrong with the uh, car engine-wise. Yeah. Uh, Quinn Ryan, he's out for the meeting. That uh, that roll cage is way too damaged, but Bianca's got him lined up, so I'll uh, I'll throw over to uh, Bianca actually. All right. So. Yeah, okay, okay. Hey guys, so I thought we'd better catch up with Quinn Ryan, mate. That was a pretty epic roll, and you can continued going, so the car must be all good. Um, yeah, no, it's actually not that good, uh, to be honest. <laughs> I, um, I was hoping so. Um, when I took off on the red light, obviously, yeah, flat right rear, so, you know, it's a rule to have to pull off. But, um, yeah, there's a little bit of roll cage damage, so fortunately that counts us out, which we're a bit gutted about. It'd be nice to go out there and carry on and, you know, just, just be amongst it. But, um, yeah, real unfortunate, pretty gutted. Felt like it was my weekend and everything was going good, but stock car racing can be very cruel at times, um, but we keep coming back, so... I mean, it's one of these sports, you love it, and you love it, but when you hate it, oh my God, does it suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an interesting one. Like, people, I have mates all the time, are saying, why the hell do you do that sport? And Yeah, it's in the blood, and you just love it. Eh? It's You keep coming back when the, high, the highs are high and the lows are low, but, yeah, it's fixable. Um, yeah, we'll be back. We've got the Battle of the Stocks next week, so we'll just focus on getting ready for that now. Hey, so, I mean, you said that you've got a little bit of roll cage damage, Quinn. How long do you think it's actually going to take in the garage to fix it? Uh, you have to ask my staff. <laughs> They'll be doing it. <laughs> Actually, Dylan, Dylan, uh, Dylan Ashton. <laughs> nah, nah, yeah, nah, it shouldn't be too bad. Just the cross in the back, not the main roll cage, just the cross. Um, so, nah, it's pretty. It'll be alright. Just take the seat out, and yeah, we'll have a look at it. All right, look, we got cars on the track now, so we'll leave it there. But we're really happy that you're all good. Yeah. Awesome. Cheers, Quinn. Thank yeah, you. Uh, nice guy and. No, always so close and right there, Barry. Right, we've got a uh, bit of time for just something very quick from you. Right, yeah, that last heat, Asa Reese, grid 25, position finish four. I mean, what can you say? That's that's a championship winning drive. He's got to survive another race yet. But so, um, so that was Asher. 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 So 25 grid to four. 25 uh, 21. to four. After after the first heat, he went from grid 12 to six. Mm. So um, yeah, which hence is is why he's. Uh, Sitting up there, second on points, two off the leader, and starting off grid four in the uh, in the last race. Yeah. So yeah, that that's a, a huge move. Twenty one passes in that heat, mm. and there was only one car missing to gain that bonus point. So um, he passed the rest. All right, we do have the official points. The ten minute wait will be done by the time this race is over. So stand by with your. Uh, bits of paper, we will give you heat two positions, points and subtotals for the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstar. I know you got cars on the track. 99 yep. M new gearbox gun to that car starting off P2 obviously is sitting on 41 points as well. Oh yes, Todd Hemingway, he's up there and so he is in sixth place or fifth yeah, equal. Fifth equal, All right, yes. Let's hand over to Craig, it is tier two. Alrighty, Rev's coming up. Waiting in the hands of the startup. We are racing, we're green. The 81 V of Max Holloway straight off into the lead. All clear through one and two. Couple of side incidents, but nothing, no, nothing to report home about there. So Max Holloway, 81 V, well out in front at the moment, but we're only one lap down, long way to go. The 274 of Mike Honeck in second place, Mike McCarthy, 888 P in third. But uh, cars up, parked up down in turn one at the moment. All underway, still under green. Nice gap forming up the front between first and second of Holloway and uh, Tyler Walker, one, three, three, yes, up into second place. Mike McCarthy, triple eight P in third. Nice gaps forming all the way back to fifth place, but the race for fifth, sixth and seventh is where it is at the moment between David Hunter, Hayden Chapman and Keegan Bunce. All sorts of changes through there. Bunts up into fifth place. David Hunter down to sixth. Brent Kelly into seventh. Maybe Chapman in your top ten. Big push on at the moment up the front with Max Holloway and Tyler Walker. First and second battling it down the back straight.
Coming into three and four. Five laps down, five to go midway through the race. Halloway, Walker, Mooney, McCarthy and Bunce in your top five. Two, three wide, three, two, one and two. Got a car facing the wrong way down on three and four. No dramas. Six down, four to go. No changes in the top five. Halloway, Walker, Mooney, McCarthy and Bunce. The 2-2-1 two, two, of uh, Brooke Larson getting back underway, coming out of turn four. He was the one that spun around and ended up facing the wrong way. Heat three of tier three advanced joinery. Seven laps down, three, sorry, eight laps down, two to go. Bit of the smoke coming out of the 274 car. Retiring off into the infield. White flag out, one to go. Max Holloway, 81V, your race leader. Coming down the back straight for the last time to take the chicken flag. Callan Mooney up to second place. Tyler Walker back to third. That looks like how it's going to finish up. Max Holloway, 81V up front. Kalen Mooney, 26V in second. And 133S of Tyler Walker in third place. Nice run for Max Holloway the whole way through there. Showing us how it's done. Keeping up the front and keeping out of trouble. Just wait for the dust to settle and we'll bring you the top 10 out of that race. So we're looking, as I say, Max Holloway, 81V first up. Second place, 26V of Kalen Mooney. Tyler Walker, 133S in third place. Fourth place, Mike McCarthy in the 888P. 33R, Robbie Maybe in fifth place. Keegan Bunce, 48B in sixth. Bryce Diner, another rotary car, 118 in seventh. Mike Honek, 274R in eighth place. Seth McConchie, 272M in ninth. And rounding out the top 10, Thomas Slater, 78. <laughs> Are you building a new commercial business or home? Or is it time that your existing premises had a repaint anywhere in the South Island? Then Anderton Decorators have you covered. From floor to ceiling, wall to roof, Anderton Decorators offer the latest techniques, equipment and technology to make even the hardest tasks seem simple. Anderton Decorators also has the expert team to take the frustration out of your next project. Call Shane today on 027 Painting. It's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators. We have you covered. The St. Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Can Do Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed, and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Can Do Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products, and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Can Do Fishing Kinner, Fish, or Power. Can Do Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you.
experience tranquility. Back in the road, the heat four for the stock cars. We're racing and already there's a bit of team tactics going on here. Clinton Cheatham parked up hard on the brakes, holding people up behind him. Letting the gap get away, so there's definitely going to be some uh, some niggle, shall we say, out in this race. Keep an eye on Clinton Cheatham, 361, and uh, Larry Henderson in car number eight, just coming through turn two now. Definitely two groups to this race, but pointy end of it. We're looking at Ethan Attenborough, 43H up front. And uh, Casey Cheatham, 97, right on his tail and putting pressure down the back straight. And then Luke Ross, car number 57 in your top three. Clinton Cheatham is pushing the car number 79 of Norman Anderson. Trying to block or now actually being pushed up into the wall himself, coming into turn one. Definitely some scores to be settled in this race. Two laps down, 10 to go. Car number 25 going for a nice little spin around, uh, doing a bit of a donut into turn one. But uh, action of plenty in a uh, relatively slow pace at this moment, but car number 79 working its way down through past the, the front straight, but looking at the pointy end, 57H, Luke Ross. Three laps down, nine to go, he's first place. 17A of Kristen Vermeulen in second place, and Casey Cheatham, 97, in third. Still just coming down the front straight now. We've got uh, the 45 of Matthew Shaw and the 361 of Clinton Cheatham having a battle. Clinton's made the gap and pulling away. Now having pressure put on him coming out of turn two. A couple of cars making a pass on the outside. Clinton's def definitely looking for something as opposed to uh, going through the race. But four laps down, eight to go. Luke Ross, Kristen Vermeulen and Casey Cheatham up in your top three. Clinton moving up into 11th place, but uh, almost running blocker at the moment for uh, for Casey. Larry Henderson just uh, stuck in the middle there, looking at what we're going to do. So six laps down, Luke Ross, Kristen Van Neulen, Casey Cheatham, top three, Ethan Attenborough, count number 43 in fourth place, Alex Young, 142R in fifth. Car sitting down on turn three and four, backed up into the wall. Clinton having a, uh, a battle again with the with the 16 of James Marshall. And Casey comes in and sorts that one out. Puts a bit of a shunt onto Marshall and coming up on the inside. Larry Henderson coming down the back straight in car number eight. Running block at the moment, slowing the traffic down. Through them at the moment, the 142R of Alex Young, the 45H of Matthew Shaw having a battle with Larry Henderson, car number eight, coming through into turn one and two. Larry Hart on his bumper, pushing him around. Nine laps down, three to go. Up the front, we're still looking at Ross, Vermeulen, Cheatham, Edinburgh, and Young in your top five. But as I say, look at watching Larry down the back straight into turn three. Definitely battles going on here. A few personal grudges to be sorted. 361, Clinton Cheatham putting the car up into the wall. Just holding him there. Smoke pouring off the, uh, off the brakes of the 45H, trying to hold uh, Larry. Clinton comes in with a shunt to free that up. <laughs> We're one lap down, white flag out, one to go. Larry flying into the side of Clinton Cheatham. So 57H, Luke Ross trying to come round to take the chicken flag. Losing track of what's happening here, but chicken flag is out. So it is official. Luke Ross takes the win. Casey Cheatham, car number 97H in second place. All the others still trying to make the make the finish at the moment. Break still, smoke still pouring out of the 45 of Matthew Shaw as he comes around being pushed over the line by Clinton Cheatham. But uh, so third place, back up to third place, we're looking at Ethan Attenborough. Fourth place, Callum McLeod, 33H. So few scores I think to be settled in that race and uh, a few discussions on the on the track.
But uh, looking at your top 10, so Luke Ross, 57H in first place. Casey Cheatham, car number 97 in second. Car number 43 in third place, which is Ethan Attenborough. Fourth place, Callum McLeod in 33H, 142R of Alex Young in fifth. Kristen Van Eulen, car number 17A from Auckland in sixth place. Seventh place, Norman Anderson, 79H, 68H. Bevan Nielsen in eighth, ninth place, 16H of James Marshall and Jaden Dredden Manning, 32H, rounding out the top 10. That's how the, uh, the race is wrapping up in this one, so definitely another action packed stock car race. <laughs> We're about to go for the stock cars and just something a little bit different. Oh. Uh, here we're going to... Oh, I can't remember. What, what, what's this called? There was a name for it. It's a reverse Le Mans start, I suppose. Is it Le Mans start? Is oh, it? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So Just we'll quickly, too, before yes. they start, um, there is a bit of a program change. They're bringing Tier 2 up, and they're actually going to put a runoff out for a Tier 3 yes. between 118 and 888, and then they'll get the final out. So they're just giving them a bit more time. Okay, so Tier 2, then the runoff. Uh, we'll come back to that one and then tier one. Right, let's hit Craig, stock car time. Thank you, Paul. As you can see, uh, interesting looking start here. We've gone green, they have to back up, get out of the way, and then get into select first gear and hit the gas. Now in these cars, it's not as easy as that sounds, going from reverse to first, under pressure, but they've managed to all get away quite cleanly. A Little bit of a different way to start a race. Back in the day, they used to run across the track, jump in the car, put everything on, and then take off, but, uh, not doing that now, so coming around, first lap down. Josh Ham Humble sitting on up the front, Nevin Shrub, 87 in second place. Ali Van Amsterdam up into third, 51A. And then of uh, course, 14B of Gemma Holloway in fourth place. Smaller field and uh, smaller amount of cars in this field, but uh, still plenty of action happening here. Two laps down and we've got a change from uh, Element Van Amsterdam and Gemma Holloway up into second and third respectively. Josh Humble still taking race lead. Car number 735, Keegan in fourth place. Just sorry jumping in there. Nice. We are looking for Mike McCarthy, the driver of the Triple Eight. These think, thoughts that he might be in the crowd. Mike McCarthy, driver of Superstock Triple Eight. You need to head down to your car. You are in a runoff. Get your butt down there, mate. You better do it. Otherwise, you're going to miss the runoff. But, uh, yes, yeah, so Mike McCarthy, get your boots on, mate. Get down to your car. So where are we looking at? Four laps down, eight to go. Eleven Amsterdam in first place. Gemma Holloway in second place. Keegan Orr, 735R of Rotorua in third place. Josh Humble slipping back into fourth. So not a lot of contact happening here. Oh, other than that, 87 taking the side out of into turn one, bit of a score to settle there, but uh, actually brings himself worse off. Looks like he could be parking himself up. Nope, he's underway, he's fired up again. That's the 87 of Nevin Shrub. Getting a bit of uh, bit of Utu, bit of revenge. But up the front, we're still looking at 51A of Ali Van Amsterdam and race leader, six down, six to go, midway through the track, through the race. Gemma Holloway still in second place, 14B, Keegan Orr, 735R in third place, Josh Humble still holding fourth and fifth, Michael Rowe, bit of a uh, situation down on, coming out of turn two on the back straight, having a bit of a niggle there, bit of a battle within their own, their own race. 
Makes the wise move, backs out, lets him go. So that's the, the number four of Josh Humble coming round. So eight laps down, four to go. Samuel Van Amsterdam just passing over the south finish line now. 87 and 72. Nevin Shrub and uh, 72 of Shane White having a battle into turn one and two. Hard on the brakes, holding up the, holding up the, uh, the 87 of Nevin Shrub. Nine laps down. Keegan Orr, 735R up into first place. Jim, Jimmer Holloway up into second. Ali Van Amsterdam dropped down to third place. Keegan's going to be looking at the white flag this time round. Again, bit of a bit of a niggle down on turn one. Nevin Shrub into it again, but white flag is out. 735 of Keegan Orr is your race leader. White flag out, one to go. Coming around out of turn two, nice and wide. Safely past the markers. Coming around through three and four to take the chicken flag. Bring it on home, and he's going to check a flag. Ke Keegan Orr, 735R, Rotorua driver, taking the race lead. As I say, a bit, uh, bit of action, a bit of niggles in between each other, but finishing that off, so third win tonight. Doing well, managed to hold on to that one in, in there, but uh, here's your, your top 10 now. So as I say, 735R of Keegan Orr, first place. 51A, Ali Van Amsterdam in second place. Michael Rowe, 67H in third. Fourth place, car number 14B, Gemma Holloway. And uh, Samuel Van Amsterdam, 52A in fifth place. Sixth place, Josh Humble, 4H. 72K, Shane White in seventh. Eighth place, 76H, Brett Rowe. Stephen Payne, 86K in ninth. And Nevin Shrub, 87H, rounding out the top ten. And also doing quite a bit of steering in himself in that race, so... Uh, Great way to, uh, to finish the stock cars for the night. So, of course, a lot of uh, great sponsors uh, here at Huntley Speedway, Craig, and, and uh, the, the season continues next weekend as well. It does. It's just uh, action of plenty at the moment. It's, uh, it's full on for the last few weeks. But uh, as we say, you know, big shout out to all of the sponsors that we've got here. Can't do it without them. So just, again, running through some of them. Repco Huntley uh, providing us with prizes and giveaways every night for me to, to walk around and pass out. Outback 4x4, of course, they had their uh, their big meeting last weekend. Um, it's got Pollock Cranes, of course. You know, couldn't do it without without the boys from Pollock Cranes, Bayes Engineering, the Rocky Fem, uh, Lightning Concrete. Side when they should have been on the inside <laughs> if there was only 26 cars and we, we talk about the draws and the grids and where they start who potentially could go on the brakes right in front of you well obviously we've got two of them there Damien Orr and Todd Hemingway they're on the front row no one's in front of them Asher Rees is on grid four uh, so right in front of him on uh, the front row well they're both going so he's okay uh, and then we've got Josh Prentice on 17 starting right in front of him on grid 15 is Chad Ace I wouldn't expect Chad Ace to go on the brakes to to try and slow Prentice down uh, with that K and G connection maybe mm. um, and right in front of um, Ethan Rees on grid 18 right in front of him is 10G Peter Rees and he sure as hell ain't going to go on the blocks <laughs> is he so uh, oh look, it's it's going to be massive and uh, so reminder we're going run off here and then we go to tier 2 for their third heat and then tier 1 just to give them a little bit more time although that report from the pits was that all the work's done on the cars uh, so it's just more times for meetings and secret deals and handshakes. And yeah. All right. Uh, so this is a runoff uh, third place in the third tier. Bryce Steiner, former World 240s champion, up against Mike McCarthy, who is in the Jack Myers car tonight. He was in his own car last night, Jack. Uh, you know, he's one of those drivers who you'd expect 
uh, on most given days to be a part of the final. They're actually uh, lined up, ready to go, and in the starters' hands, it's four laps to decide third place in third tier. Green flag drops, and McCarthy's pushed it right out to the wall, um, winning the toss and choosing pole, and had that opportunity to put Steiner in there, but hasn't worked. So the 118 will lead them around. Bryce Steiner, long time super stop run. He had to just try and get away here and just gets a little bit wrong. Now McCarthy takes the lead. He's looked really quick. Uh, well, we know, we know how quick this Jack Myers race car is. Um, Bryce Steiner, long time runner in the stock cars, originally back here at Huntley Speedway, then into the super stock class. Uh, running for Huntley, part of the successful Busters team over the years as well. Oh, here we go. McCarthy's got it wrong. Steiner comes at him. Oh, just gets that a little bit wrong. Steiner didn't quite get the bumper into the right spot. He's chasing him down. You can see that pace. Here comes Steiner. Here's that turn again, and he's not going to make the same mistake, Bryce Steiner. And he'll come around for the chicken flag here. Plenty of experience, Bryce Steiner. In the Superstock class and runoffs as well. He was part of that. Was I'm sure it was Bryce Steiner in that infamous runoff in... Hawks Bay with yes. the two cars sitting at either end of the track and the steering wheel out the window. Bryce Steiner took his steering wheel off to show the other driver that hey, come on, come and get me. I haven't even got my steering wheel on. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the rules who was the down rule. the other end actually, but the rules changed after that that, yeah. you, that you had to keep moving because they just sat there for minutes. <laughs> it, it felt like minutes. It was probably probably not, but uh, it, it could go forever uh, if they didn't do something. Uh, okay, actually, there's obviously been a change again because now I see the New Zealand Championship field lining up behind us. Yeah they called up for tier 2 and uh, the tier 2 boys were not ready so oh, the tier 1 boys said we're ready, let's go okay. play. Let's, okay. <laughs> let's go play. Uh, hey Stu, um, they're all in their cars now, they're, they're gritting up, you're all set to go, what, what do you reckon is going to happen here? Oh, he's, he's, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll come to you I'm soon. I'm just going to make sure I don't fall off over the track. Over the track, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll give you a chance. Let's, let's let, make sure all the drivers are there before you start uh, telling us stuff um, about what you may have seen. Barry, you, you're having your final look down the points there. Actually, just, oh, just quickly. Yeah. Oh, and it. Hey, no, she's no. like, no. Yeah, no, no. No, look at me. <laughs> she's, she gets really excited in the, in the uh, buggy here. Yeah. She's, showing yeah. she's quite excited about this grid too. Yeah. What's your pick? You point to one. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So everybody's got their picks. Everybody's yep. making their decisions. This is quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. We will look at the grid and then give you our final thoughts. Damien Orr and Todd Hemingway in contention on the front row. Matt Picard is there on grid three. Defending champ. Can he go back to back? Asher Rees, 1NZ on grid four. Mark Costello, Mac Nielsen on row three. Then it's Brett Loveridge inside. Elias Dykes for grid seven and eight. Row five, Kerry Remnant missing. Uh, Mig Rumney will be on grid 10. Then it's Jamie Hamilton and Gav Tanifar on grids 11 and 12. 4-2-2, Dylan Ashton and 56, Trent James. Then to Chad Ace and Peter Rees on grids 15 and 16. Then here's our other two contenders, grids 17 and 18, Josh Prentice and Ethan Rees. Then we go to Richard Gaskins uh, and 22 and Sam Hughes in 77. Rebecca Barr, Brett Nichols, Hamish Booker, Quinn Ryan missing of grid 24 and on the back row uh, for this one Randall Tarrant see if he can make his way through the field and Maddie Wise on grid 26. Man with, I don't with, know if you can see from where you're sitting but Damien Orr has set pole quite a fair way out. Yep. Who's has, off uh, Who's off two? Uh, Todd Hemingway. So, so Hemingway yeah, yeah he's just coming around now yep. and I'll see how close he is to that wall. So he's got to squeeze past those back <laughs> markers as well. All right, uh, Barry, final thoughts? It's going to be good. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's hope so. Stu Russell, uh, you're on the infield. you bring us any info uh, as and when will. it unfolds there. How are you feeling? What do you reckon? Mate, I'll tell you what, This just looking straight down at 24 of our top super stocks in the country right now, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing. And I'll tell you one thing, I think the 7R is going to be on the pole line. 
You reckon? Michael Rumney, Mick Rumney, trolling the pole line is the pick there from Stu Russell. Well, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, here comes Mick. He's just actually missed his grid spot. Okay. He's pulling up uh, mid midway through. It looks like he's trying to get in behind. Is it Loveridge, the 16? Um, Barry's looking at He's right down the bottom there. Mick Rumney, the 7. Oh, they're going to send them around for a lap. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah, grid, uh, where is he, grid 10? Yeah, so he's... Grid 10, oh, 10. so he's actually on the... Ah, uh, there we go. He's on the outside. So he'll start in behind Elias Dykstra. Oh, yes, yep. All right. So the last chance for these guys to just soak it up and go. With 15 laps left. I tell you what, even just this lap, they all come out here, they only do this lap at the start of the night mm. to check the transponders. This lap alone is just that final bit of psych out. It is, isn't it? You know, Damien Orr had that car parked exactly where he wanted it before. Now he's got to put it back in that same spot. And, you yeah, see, look at this. Look how much Damien Orr's slowing down here. He, he wants these cars to move through. Uh, before he brings it all the way and he's coming up now very quickly did slow that right down but you're right it just gives them that extra chance to just well it could work both ways suck them up a bit more uh, maybe make them a little bit more nervous but yeah Damien they know now those outside row cars just how close Damien Orr is going to bring it to the wall I don't think he's quite as close this time around not not this time mm. around but I tell you what he's uh, he's definitely picked the drivey part of the track Damien Orr and Todd Hemingway on the front row in contention. I've just checked those grids too. Um, the two at a disadvantage, or three of them actually, Asher Reese, Ethan Reese, and Todd Hemingway. And the other three cars in that top six have got one less car to pass. So there's three grids add up to 40, three to 41. Okay. So we'll just see what happens if there's one point in it at the end. <sighs> so we know the six who are gunning for it. The question remains, who is going to be helping them? Who will take pot shots? Who will be the blockers? Who will try and slow down the cars that are in opposition to the mates of theirs on the track tonight? It is heat three. I think this is what makes the New Zealand Superstock Championship so exciting. You just don't know what's going to unfold over these 15 laps in the final. We have seen some epic third heats over the years to decide the 1NZ in the Superstock class. What will unfold tonight? We are about to find out. Will it be Prentice, Asher or Ethan Rees, maybe Damien Orr, Todd Hemingway or Randall Tarrant? Those are the six drivers in contention. Will they all get taken out? Will Matty Wise sneak through from down in position seven? These drivers are not blinking in that front row. Eyes forward. The focus is right there, especially Hemingway. I, I, I think it's intimidating just making eye contact with him, to be fair. <laughs> Look, now we've got Annette Hutchby, clerk of the course. She's just double checking here. We got. So we're just bringing up this outside row. So Mick Rumney, um, is, so there's a gap. Now we've, we've brought them right up. Okay, so she's just making sure. Getting this exactly right for this third and final heat. So sitting where they are on the grid, if nobody passes anybody but they finish where they're sitting now, yep. Damien Orr would win with 67 points over Josh Prentice with 65 points. But you know that's not going to how it's finished. But uh, once we've done one lap, it's all going to have changed. Heat three of the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstock Championships. We are finally here, race fans. It's been a long time coming. Thank you for being part of it at Huntley International Speedway or through the Pitts TV stream. We are go for the New Zealand Superstock Championships and it's the front three. We normally say it doesn't matter who's going to win the race. It's about what happens in the back part of the field. But we are watching the front three. Hemingway leads. Then it is Damien Orr, he's held on to second. Rees drops back into, settles down into third place. And Rumney on the pole line in turn two. As predicted. And so he's just going to watch. Oh, look at that. He's, he pulled in straight in, looking for Asher Rees in the 1NZ. But it's about, let's watch those guys who are coming through from the back as well that are also in contention. Rumney gets spun around in the 7R. 
So he's going to be one to watch. He knows the lay of the land now. And the Todd Hemingway still running out front. 4K, Chad Ace. He's down towards the back of the pack as well. Barry's going to bring us some updates. Josh Prentice is up into fifth place. And running hard. Here we go. This time, Romney. Again, it's just not helping him with Damien Orr sitting there in second place. Uh, and Asher Rees is right in behind him. So at the moment, it is... Oh boy, we've got Mark Costello dropping down the pack now. Trying to find Josh Prentice. Josh Prentice is in 12th place. Uh, Ethan Rees has moved up into 9th. And Randall Tarrant has come up from grid 26 to 14th place at the moment. And Tarrant makes another pass. He is flying. He's up into 10th. Oh, we got one gone around. Down in turn three and, uh, sorry, turn two. Out the front, it is still Todd Hemingway leading from Asher Rees. Then Damien Orr. Rumney still trolling the pole line in the number seven, but he's got to pick them out. He's got to find those cars that he's after. And it's a pretty rugged pack. At the moment, Asher Rees looking comfortable to go back to back from Todd Hemingway, Damien Orr and Josh Prentice running in third equal at the moment. 7R, still the only one out there to start making some moves. And again, those three have gone past the 7R and he hasn't been able to pick out and slow down the defending champion, Asher Rees. Who's he after now? He's after Matt Nielsen. No, he's gonna ease off that one. We are eight laps gone. We are over half distance. Elias Dykstra getting tangled up there with Rumney. And Rumney takes Elias Dykstra. I think he's picked out the wrong, oh, it's the wrong five. He saw the five. I reckon he may have been after Josh Prentice uh, in that one. So it is still Todd Hemingway. Who's your race leader? Then it is the one he's in. Here we go. Can he get him? No. The one he's in around the outside. Damien Orr's dropped back there into third. Hemingway, Rees and Orr. Now Josh Prentice is up into fourth place. And a clear 2 wins there at the moment. But we've got a few more starting to just drive slowly around the pole line. One but equal. One equal. Asher Rees and Josh Prentice. Oh, and again, the 7 R's got the wrong five. Slowing down Elias Dykstra. Matty Wise has come to a stop down in turn four. We've got smoke. Oh, the 66 Randall Tarrant is smoking. So it's Todd Hemingway still leading the race. But it's Asher Rees and Josh Prentice who are first equal. We've got a wheel off down in turn number one, apparently. Down the main straight. Dykstra and Rumney get caught up there. Oh, and Rumney, not where you want to be sitting in the 7R. We're going to get the white flag next time around. It's Hemingway's lost the wheel and it's losing the podium. And Asher Rees, Josh Prentice, Ethan Rees are your top three, but it's a tie at the moment. 1NZ and 5G are first equal. The white flag is out. Where's the 1NZ? Heads down into turn number three and four. Here comes the defending champion, and he takes the checkered flag, Ethan Rees. Where's Josh Prentice? Is he going to hold on to third place? Here comes Rees and Prentice. We've got a runoff. Unofficially. We've got Asher Rees and Josh Prentice tied for first place on 70 points, and Ethan Rees in third. So the top three in the race end up being on the podium. So Todd Hemingway lost his wheel and he ended up coming home uh, way drivers, down in 20th place the and gators. in 10th Shut. overall. So again, as that dust settles, Shut. we've got unofficially 1NZ Asher Rees and 5G Josh Prentice tied on 70 points. Then three points back, Ethan Rees 
on 67 points. Then we go another, or no, a long way back, seven points back to Gav Tanifar. So it's just been dominant yes. uh, in the end from Ethan, uh, Ethan Rees, Asher Rees, and Josh Predis. So here we see the cars. They're just Riding circulating the at the moment um, because the, the officials are uh, looking at that we list that we're looking at, the and they're going to take the top the six, uh, maybe seven. Normally it's the six, isn't it, down, to, and they get uh, checked and uh, weighed. Asher Rees, Josh Prentice, Ethan Rees. We then go Gavin Tunnifar, Mark Costello, Damian Orr, uh, the next three. Peter Rees home in seventh, Randall Tarrant. He was flying uh, early on in the race. He's ended up dropping down to 19th. So he got up to, I think it was 12th place yeah, very early in the race. He got, got a fair way up. Uh, but still wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have given him uh, a podium spot where he's finished on 50 points that might have got into 60 but long way off the the two on 70 points yes. and one on 67 so one and five will be one and two and using uh, so, uh, and unofficially third place is the one two seven of Ethan Rees so, so provisional runoff provisional runoff one uh, and five. Asher Rees and Josh Prentice is the provisional runoff for first place. And Ethan Rees in third, so that we're just getting through to all of these drivers. See, look, I think they're kind of thinking and hoping. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Asher Rees waiting for the flag. So he'll be. So he doesn't quite know yet. He he knows that he's done well to win the race. So he's got past those two that he needed to do, but he needed Josh Prentice to be fourth, yes. not third. So Prentice got up to third in the heat, and that has made him equal with Asher Rees. And looking at how many cars they have actually passed to get there, yep. Asher Rees has had to pass one more car to get to 70 points than what Josh Prentice has had to pass to get <laughs> to 70 points. Wow. So, um, yeah. But so much of that, somebody, you know, people will say, well, we can fix it by putting an extra car in. But you can't because you've got the inside outside thing. Well, that's And, that's and then you've got some heats, 26 mm. or, or 27 cars start, another heat, 15 cars start yep. or something. So, you know, you, you just can't fix that slight difference there. That's slight anomaly. Yeah, no. anomaly is the word I was trying yeah. to think of. You, you basically <laughs> hey, I've just got Josh, I've got front. Josh Prentice. Just pre hey. provisionally, you've got a runoff with Asheries for one in Z. Oh, it's unreal. I've got a number, so I'm stoked. Mate, we'll let you go back in there, get tuned up for this runoff, mate. And Stu, I, Stu, I think, uh, uh, give Ethan Hang on, here we go. <laughs> Ethan Rees, provisionally mate, 3NZ. Fuck yeah, mate, <laughs> If I told you that uh, Asher and Prenny have got a run off, who's going to win that, brother? <laughs> oh, that can be a good one, but I'll tell you what, who knows, man? <laughs> who knows? We're on. How good's that, bro? We'll let you get back in the pits, clear that track up, mate. These boys are pumped. They are. I think I'm gonna catch a breath here, and I think I think Craig can take over and give us the call on this third and final heat, the Lightning Concrete Tier Two. Craig, sounds like we will be having a uh, a runoff straight after this, and then uh, prize given down in the centre centre of the track. So don't go away anywhere. You can't. You know, there'll be no gates open up as yet anyway. So. Sit back, relax, watch the race, watch the, the runoff. You let that uh, those results come in. All the sh all the cars are currently in the shed at the moment. Testing's going on. I think uh, just here. I think they're just car. trying to work out. Obviously, with this runoff, they do need to get the five G and the one NZ back to the trailers to prepare. But uh, they are going through fuel testing and things like that at the moment too. So just getting word that uh, there's a lot of testing and, and uh, everything happening in the pits at the moment. So we're going to sit back and watch this race, see how this pans out for the Lightning Concrete Tier Two. And then we'll bring the uh, the runoffs or anything like that afterwards. But uh, at the moment, just sorting out these cars, getting themselves organised where they need to be, and we'll get this final race underway. Twelve laps to go. Longest twelve laps of their of their night. 
Words going everywhere, discussions happening. They say just getting word that they're doing a lot of testing, fuel testing, car weighing, checking everything as needs to be done on on event of, of this scale. And then we'll have that sorted. But car's getting underway. Looking on where they need to be be gridded up. Looks like we're just trying to get some uh, some points from the from the tier two, so we'll uh, we'll cross over to Barry when he gets those. But uh, just while there's a, a, a bit of a delay in sorting out where these cars need to be, <laughs> just a few issues here, but uh, we'll have these for you as soon as possible. Yeah, just uh, it's one of these computers which is on its side and just getting the mouse moved <laughs> around. Um, so lightning concrete. Uh, tier two. It's a, it's a certainly a depleted field from the original 26, Craig. It is. And most definitely, there's a, a very large gap in the middle, shall we say? And they're trying to figure out where they need to be, but uh, definitely a lot of cars missing out of there. Yep. I'm just having some issues here. Lightning no concrete worries. tier two points. All right, here we go. James Clark, of course, he's won two races. He's, yeah. won, he's won two heats. So he's three points ahead of Dylan Marshall, who's had a second and a third. Uh, then Tom Cooper, uh, he's had a sixth and a fourth. So they're your top three. James Clark, Dylan Marshall, Tom Cooper, then Daniel Burmester out of Palmy. Awesome. Thank you for that. So those are the three to watch. Rev's coming up. Everyone's moving into the infield. It's looking good. Lightning Concrete, tier two, heat three. 12 laps, we are green, we are racing! Action straight into it, the 89R taking 99 straight into the infield. That was uh, definitely a, uh, a targeted thing there of Tyler James and Jacob Buckle. So they've dropped all the way back to uh, to the end of that. And they're going to be having their own battle for a bit of, a bit of revenge on that. But meanwhile, up at the pointy end, 38V, Zane Dykstra up front. 85G, Tom Cooper in second place. And then we've got the uh, Brendan Tyne in the third place, Daniel Burmester in fourth, and Dylan Marshall in the top five at the moment. But plenty of action happening. Cars down in the uh, in the wall of turn four, sorting themselves out, still racing. The 669 heading in. That's Brendan Tye actually heading into the infield. So uh, he will be. He was in the top five. He's now in the uh, in the middle and parked up, running real wide. The, uh, the 99 of Blake Addison, the Stratford car, fourth place, but real wide, but big tie up down on turn four. All I could see was cars pointing northwards, then put into the sky, but they've sort themselves out, giving each other a shunt along on that. I'll let you know who that was. So, uh, underway, that was the, the 71. Tony Wooten straight up the back of the car in front of him, and all I saw was wheels pointing straight up into the air. Yeah, it's uh, the Tyler James car who's been doing all that blocking all night. <laughs> he was uh, blocking James Buckrell and then Buckrell actually got him into the turn four concrete uh, and then uh, Wooten came in to add a bit of assistance yep. and yeah, rode right up the back of him <laughs> and uh, he's come off very second best, uh, the James car. I would say definitely that'll, uh, that's what happens when, you, when you're blocking a lot of people though. Yep. They're going to get revenge. It's like ice cream, best served sweet and cold. But six laps down, six to go midway through the race. Zane Dykstra is still your race leader. Tom Cooper in second place, Dylan Marshall in third. Action and plenty again, still involving Tony Wooten down there. He went after James Clark, did he? The, he's won two heats. He did, yep. Went after them and ended up on the infield. Sort himself out, back underway. So I think his, uh, his goal in this race is to, uh, to exact some uh, some penalties. But eight laps down, four to go. Dykstra, Marshall, Cooper, Adamson. Those are your top four. Jamie Ferguson in fifth place. The 71H of Tony Wooten slowing down. Putting into the into turn one. Oh, who's he taking in there? That looks like. I can't quite see on no, that can't line. Quite Back at the point end though, two laps to go, we're going to be looking at the white flag this time round for Zane Dykstra, car number 38V. Oh, it's Tom Cooper. 
Yeah, it was Tom say. Cooper who he's taken out. Yep. Oh, oh, and a massive <laughs> shot on the 1-4-1. One one. That was huge on Lance Mitchell. Big contact in there. That's Motors going, going, around. going oh. red. Gone red under white flag. That was a big contact into turn one. Hey, just to fill in the gap. Yep. Asher Rees on pole for the runoff. Okay, Asher, thank ooh. you. Okay. So, you big whack into turn one, just checking on, on everyone in there. We have got white flag out, so one down to go. We've got the 99 S parked up directly underneath us. The Lance so Mitchell's okay. Okay, so we've got, got a replay here. And, yeah, just spun them around and in. Backwards, they both went in mega hard. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's the G cars that, uh, that have been uh, dominating this one. And um, Tyler James doing plenty of blocking for them this time around. It's Tony Wooten. Um, for Tony Wooten in 71. So I don't know whether he's been sent to the infield or whether he's now got an issue. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he's got an issue after what he's been. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, he went in there pretty hard too, didn't he? He did. Alrighty. So, uh, confirmed about the runoff is definite. Um, and then the understanding is, yeah, and I think you mentioned it, Craig, the prize giving will happen straight after the runoff. All right, let's head, uh, well, they're maybe about to go back racing. Uh, all the officials are off. Uh, no, he no, said let's no. Head, he let's said head no. down to the. Okay, we're going to, we'll, we'll head to be anchored down in the tech shed uh, following this one because we might just have a time that we might just need to fill in. Uh, before those two cars are ready for the runoff, uh, we're on to the last lap anyway. Yeah. Uh, white flag but is out. So we're so not far away. We'll head down to Bianca after that. 38V Zane Dykstra, that's your race leader. So that's the car you're looking for. Dylan Marshall, 57 in second place. So all the officials coming back into Lights the infield. Lights are out. We are green. We are racing. White flag out. One to go. Straight into the half lap sprint. 30V Zane Dykstra. Checkered flag done and dusted. So that's going to be how it finishes up. Zane Dykstra, 38V in first place. And Jamie Ferguson, 96A in second place. So just wait, we'll just wait for the dust to settle. Here's the top 10 coming up now. So as I say, Zane Dykstra, 38V, first place. Jamie Ferguson, 96A in second. James Clark, 29G in third. Cody Chatfield, 741A in fourth. Fifth place, 5R, Logan, Nich Logan Nicholson maybe? Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, sorry, sorry, just to interrupt there, <laughs> no the top worries, five. Mate. This is the third heat, so it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. It, it's, about, it's about the positions. This is the last thing that uh, meeting organisers are going to want to hear. <laughs> uh, but the way it's all finished up, unofficially, <laughs> at the end, we've got a tie for first place in Tier 2. <laughs> oh, no. um, James Clark and Dylan Marshall both finishing on 74 points. Um, and then in third place is the man with the flag right now, Zane Dykstra, uh, race winner uh, on 65, so a long way back. But unofficially, James Clark... 28G, winner of races one and two. He comes home fifth place in that one. Uh, so win, win, and fifth is equal to Dylan Marshall's second, third, and second, both on 74 <laughs> points. So we've had a runoff for third place in tier three. You can't really then not have a runoff for first place in tier two, can you? <laughs> One NZ and 5G. One of them will be one, and one of them will be two. Asheries looking to do what has only been done three times before. Dave Evans doing it. 84 and 85. Craig and Boot doing it. Yeah, it was. Christchurch and Rotorua when he went back to yeah. back in the 80s. Yeah. Craig Boot in the 90s. So that would have been... Or was that 2000, 2001? Uh, no, 99, 2000. 99 oh. was 
Kia. Yes, and then Blenheim. That's Blenheim, right, it was too. Blenheim in the year 2000. 2000. Correct. And then Shane Penn doing it okay, gentlemen, in the late noughties. Uh, just a quick reminder, guys. Oh, here we go. Nelson the and in uh, Napier. Pit gates are shut, yep. Stu. Asher Rees on pole, Josh Prentice. Hey, look, no, let's send it out to the fans. No, Who wants to see Asher Rees go back to me. back? Cheers, guys, and good luck. Who out there wants to see Josh Prentice add to his New Zealand stock car title with the New Zealand super stock title? There's a lot of uh, mutual yep, supporters is. out there. And I tell you what, we are going to talk with the new 1NZ straight after this. All right, here we go. It is four laps to decide it. Will it be cat and mouse? Will it be hard and fast? 1NZ Asheries. 5G, Josh Prentiss, green flag drops, and the 1NZ takes to the front straight away. Prentiss comes in, chases hard, gets right on the back bumper. Gets a little bit wrong there, Josh Prentiss, so now there's a buffer for the 1NZ of Asher Rees. We know how fast he has looked and how smooth he can be. Just gets a little bit of a push on through turn three, but gets it tidied up through four. So he heads to the front with a point three of a second lead. Again, just nice and smooth through from Asher Rees. Both of these two, as highlighted there by Stu just before the race, Josh Prentice, a former New Zealand stock car champion. Likewise with Asher Rees. Asher Rees now two laps away. Oh, runs it real wide here this time, the 1NZ. A little sniff of hope for Josh Prentice, but just not close enough to pounce. It'll be white flag this time around, race fans. Here at Huntley International Speedway. Can history be made once again for the second time here in the Waikato? A driver gets set to go back to back, or does he? Oh boy, I was building up for that one. <laughs> but it is Asher Rees goes back to back as your New Zealand Superstock champion. Paul Hickey, you probably can't hear it up there, but mate, this crowd is going <laughs> ballistic. Oh, we can hear it. Congratulations. 1NZ Asheries, 2NZ Josh Prentice, and the 3NZ of Ethan Rees. These three mates, brothers, will share the podium at the New Zealand Super Stock Champs for 2023, presented by the Waikato Stock and Saloon Car Club and our major meeting sponsor, Pollock Cranes. He's got the chequered flag in hand once again, just like he did what feels only minutes ago. He was only halfway there. Now, he has got it. Barry Brown, Asher Rees, back to back. Well, and we've uh, been lucky enough to call both of them, Paul. Yes. So, um, no, great to see. I mean, what a driver. I'd have been happy with either one, quite frankly. Um, they've certainly done the job. Uh, no, just, just really good. I thought certainly uh, that 5G, it looked good standing still, looked even better going around the track with the lights reflecting off it. And I thought earlier on he uh, was going to be more than a match for anybody. And yep. at the end of the day, you can't even say he's missed by a point because they finished up equal. So Josh Prentice, so close. Um, and, and I've got to say, like, he, inside he'll be absolutely gutted, Josh Prentice, but... Look, there's no, there's no, nothing wrong with being two NZ and losing to uh, a driver <laughs> in the form of Hasheries. No, that, that's right. I mean, yeah. Now, uh, two. There we go. Two super stocks, one stock car title. Skews down there. Helmet's coming off, and uh, we'll get a word from the new New Zealand. Well, I was going to say new New Zealand super stock champion. Um, Mate, I've got to be careful of this bloody hot exhaust here because these Rees cars don't have bars. But hey, who cares about that? Asher Rees, back to back, New Zealand Superstock champion. Yeah, it's uh, pretty unreal. I don't think it's sunk in. Um, like I said before, just a big thanks to everyone who makes it happen. Family, friends. It's great to have my partner here with my baby and everything. Um, yeah, just unbelievable and just great club. Huntley's done a fantastic job of this event. What a great podium you see there. Another Rees year again. Unfortunately, it's the way it is, and I think it's the way it's going to stay for a little while. There's a few cars out there now. So uh, big thanks to them and just everyone for such a big help. Um, your, your, your help never goes unnoticed. We never, may never say thanks, but it, 
Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Mate, Huntley has got a thing for going back to back. Craig Boot done it here, and he's one of the legends. Now you've just put yourself in that same book. Yeah, it's uh, pretty surreal to be in that same uh, understanding of... Uh, I did look at the trophy. There was only three uh, or two people that are going back to back, so it was pretty huge. Mate, go in there, celebrate with the family. Dad's absolute over the moon, and Ethan is 3NZ as well. Yeah, it's an unreal podium. You just look at the quality of cars here and guys, and those guys are genuinely unbelievable. So, yeah, I can't, uh, I can't believe I'm standing on the top step of this podium. <laughs> Mate, I can't believe I'm standing here talking to you because, I mean, like, we've all grown up together. It's a great era of Superstock racing we've got ahead of us. Oh, definitely. There's plenty of years to come for the future of the sport. Um, the Mini Stocks is a great feeder class, and that's where we started out. Beauty. Asher, go and let those emotions run wild. Have a cold water. Fire up this car. <laughs> Get into it, mate. Oh, look, you could hear the emotion in his voice, couldn't you? Um, for the 1NZ. Josh. Josh, mate. 2NZ, you look bloody exhausted. That car is bloody quick that's in front of you. That's got, it's got one, but 2NZ, man, how awesome. Oh, unreal. Can't even describe it at the moment. Just doesn't even feel true. Come here for a goal this weekend just to qualify, and yeah, car's been on rails. And to go 1NZ and 3NZ with two of my brothers, you know, Reed's race cars on top, top three. How good. Bloody awesome, mate. And to add it to your one inch stock car, we'll let you go in. For, you've got to follow Asher. All right, yeah, because we've, we've yet to have confirmation of that other runoff, but we will uh, let you know that once we uh, do here. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Our podium has been sorted. Uh, presentation, Drivers which will the runoff, take place the down on the uh, infield. So this is for first place rules. in the one, Tier 2 one competition. Uh, so thanks to okay, Advanced Joinery and rule. Lightning Concrete, sponsors of our second and third tier competitions this evening. And Dylan Marshall, I think, was one of those ones that was tied in, in that uh, runoff decision, which was runoff decided by fastest lap. Yes. All right. They are gridded up. We are about to go. And then I think we're going to maybe cross to Ethan Rees for a quick chat after this, unless they are making their way out to the infield. Here we go. It's four laps to decide the winner of Tier 2. Look out again. Dylan Marshall's brought that right out wide to the wall. So he's going to look to take... Uh, James Clark to the concrete, side by side. So Clark takes Marshall to the infield. So Marshall has to ease off, and he's going to get right back on his bumper. So different, different scenario here now, isn't it? So James Clark just slowing that pace down. And I suppose that shows that confidence of Ethan Rees, uh, sorry, Asher Rees in that previous runoff. Yes. Just, just go. Um, and backed his own confidence and his own pace. So this is all James Clark actually needs to do. He just, <laughs> you know. Now Marshall, is still, oh, he looked to get out the outside, could come and then make a, a, a spinning attempt. And Marshall's trying to get some pace up to help to push him wide. Can he get outside him to dive on down? No. So clever work here from James Clark in the 29. He's really been one to watch in the last season or yeah. so, hasn't he? Yeah. And uh, come on in leaps and bounds this year. So this time Marshall just eased back a wee bit. Then he was able to come in with a bit of extra pace. Oh, looks to just get inside. Can't do it. Now there's a bit of separation. So now Clark's going to go. And this is going to be the white flag. One to go here. And Marshall comes in and oh, tries the spin. Oh, how did he save that? Here we go. Look out down in turn three. Marshall is just going to go hard at him here. Is he going to get close? No, he's not. Good race. Good runoff. All right. So uh, James Clark wins tier two. Hey, guys. So I'm down here. It's full of emotion here. We've got three NZ. Oh, mate, Ethan, how, what about these guys, eh? You guys are like brothers. The emotion was thick and fast. We could see it. But back to back for Asher, how proud? Yeah, definitely a proud moment for all of us, really. Um, pretty surreal, really. I mean, me and Josh are sort of battling quite hard in that race, and we, we managed to slip through, and uh, a couple of guys got spun out and sort of worked in our favour. But to have Asher go back to back, you know, it's on. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, we've got Reese Chassis, one, two, and three. We picked I had full faith. Josh, mate, I'm such a proud sponsor. I'm almost in tears. So good. Well done on your second place, mate. Oh, yeah, it's unreal. 
the podium with these two Reese race cars on top. How good. Yeah, amazing, amazing. I mean, you got second, but it's your first title in a super stock, and who better to get one and two and three than these three boys here? Oh, yeah, dream come true. Harley Race Engines, Reese race cars on yeah. top. Unbelievable. I mean, we've got Pete. Look at Dad over here. He was in tears. We've got Shailen. Everyone's so proud of you boys. I can't even tell you. Asha, mate, how are you doing? The emotion must be so, so up there right now. Oh, it's coming in waves. It's getting the better of me. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty unreal. I can't really uh, come to grips with it yet. There's only a few names that have gone that back-to-back, -back, and to do it with these boys on the podium is just unreal. So another big thanks to Hartley and uh, Pete for the chassis that we run. Just a great combo, and it's proven it out there for everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Listen, guys, I've held you up long enough. Let's go and get these presentations done. Three very, very proud drivers right here. Well, there we go. We've heard all the words from the three on the top of New Zealand Superstocks for 2023. Uh, we're just waiting official word on uh, what may be going on here. We've got, uh, we are looking for a trophy presentation. We've obviously done plenty of interviews, so I don't know whether we'll need to uh, chat to the top three again, but it's nice to see them uh, receiving their trophies and their sashes. Thanks, thanks everyone for staying back for the prize giving. We're going to kick it off with the advanced joinery, third tier New Zealand stock car champ. So without further ado, can we have uh, 118 R Bryce Stein in third place? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. She's right. Are you right? Oh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Camera. Where's the camera? Oh, yeah, camera. Uh, yeah, this is cool. Didn't expect to get any trophies this weekend after my dismal effort last night. Um, credit to my crew. Got stuck into the car today. Got it going good again. Um, yeah, they totally dedicated. Driving all over the country to get here. Thanks, Red and Huntley, for putting the show on. All my sponsors. All the guys home on TV. Jason Gray, I know you're watching. Um, cheers, thanks Huntley, and congratulations to all the winners, and uh, yeah, good on you. Awesome mate, thanks for that. Oh, Fee's making a run. <laughs> Alrighty. Second place, 33R, Luke Irvine. Awesome mate, congratulations. Just happy to be here. Cheers to Robbie for the car and Russell. Uh, awesome car and just thanks for the whole season. Cheers guys. Awesome, thank you. First place, 133S, Tyler Walker. Good on you, mate. 
Uh, just firstly, I'd like to thank the whole Reeves team today for um, their help to get our car going um, after a night to forget last night, um, as well as Steve Hampton for um, sorting out our bow housing. So without those guys, I wouldn't even have made tonight and I uh, would have forgot about it. So um, big one to all my sponsors, um, especially Dad. It was just me and him this weekend. Um, so, yeah, thank you to Huntley, the Huntley Club for putting it on. You guys have had a, had a tough season, so it's good to see you guys finally get it done. And, yeah, thank you to everyone. Awesome. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on to the Lightning Concrete. Yeah, hey guys. Stay back here. Stay by your signs. Alrighty, moving on to the Lightning Concrete. Second tier New Zealand Stock Car Champs. Alrighty, great. We can have a word from the sponsor. Here you go, mate. Hey guys, good racing. Good finals there, boys. Nice and fast, smooth. Uh, yes, yeah, so I thought I'd better put a bit of entertainment on in the last one for the crowd. So, good on you. Cheers, eh? Awesome, mate. Thank you, and thanks for your support. So, moving straight into it, third place, 38V, Zane Dykstra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd just like to uh, thank my sponsors. Um, I'm not going to rattle them off because you'll probably be here for a while. Um, <laughs> uh, definitely uh, thank Pollock Cranes, uh, Lightning Concrete, cheers men, um, and also Reese Race Cars and Hartley Engines. Top combo. And uh, thanks to um, my crew, my little crew that I had this weekend. And uh, yeah, thanks. Awesome. Awesome, mate. Thank you. Okay. Second place, 57V, Dylan Marshall. Yeah, sweet. Um, I'd just like to say a big thanks to Huntley first off. Um, yeah, it's been a great meeting. I know it's been years trying to run this, so finally got it done. Um, big thanks to Tony, sponsor. Um, all my sponsors, HCR, HDS, Chicken's Demolition, um, Wire It. Um, and yeah, congrats to Zane and um, James. Cheers. Awesome, mate. Thank you. First place. 29G, James Clark. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank Huntley Speedway for putting on another uh, Primo event. You know, it's been hard work over the last couple of years to get this done, but they've done an awesome job. Um, the Slaters for sponsoring Pollock Cranes, uh, awesome effort for the guys. Tony, for sponsoring the second tier uh, and trying his best to lo let me win it. But um, yeah, cheers to everybody else that turned up, all the crowd. Uh, it gets a bit tiring after time after time. But um, yeah, I'd just like to thank my sponsors, um, Rees Race Cars, Composting New Zealand, Mike and I Bolt, all the boys that get in behind me. Wouldn't make it happen without them. So thank you very much. Catch you next time. Awesome, mate. Thank you. Wayne, Wayne Thomas Pollock. I'll call him up. You, 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 I want to say a few words. Oh, yeah, okay. Here we go. We're good. All righty, so just before we get on to the, uh, the, the tier final, just like to um, hand the mic over to, uh, to Red just for a few words. Okay guys, uh, thank you very much. 
Thanks to the public for coming out and supporting us and this event. Um, I'd like to thank all the competitors. What a marvellous job you've done over the last two days. You're a credit to your sport. And um, thank you for coming to the Huntley International Speedway. None of this would happen unless we had staff. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge my staff. It's been three years in the planning uh, with the longest COVID ever. But um, they did an amazing job over the last couple of days. And uh, it's a credit to them for everything that they do and all the people around New Zealand that uh, support our sport. Without sponsors, of course, none of this happens, or it does, but it's a lot harder. And we're proud to have um, Pollock Cranes on board. And I'd like to call uh, Thomas and uh, Wayne Slater up here to um, present these trophies. And one of them must be able to speak. I'm not sure, but we'll give it a go. But uh, special thanks to the competitors um, and, the, and the young fellows that are coming up now to receive these, these trophies. What a credit to themselves and their families and everybody around them. So uh, I'll ask Thomas and uh, Wayne Slater to come up and uh, present the trophies. Awesome, thank you, Red. Also, a big shout out to you, Red, for the work that you've done. We all, we all, as a club, we all appreciate it, so uh, thanks for that. But uh, without further ado, we'll get this one done. Three and Z, Ethan Rees. Uh, first off, just like to start with, um, big thanks and well done to Red and Fee and the Huntley team. Um, like Red said, three years in the making, you finally made it, and what an awesome weekend day, so well done. Uh, to these two over here, we met these Lunigans uh, a couple of years ago at this team's event, and uh, since then they've been big supporters of Dad, and uh, they've put us up at the uh, Hamilton Yard, and um, you guys are unreal, eh? What you guys do for this club, and for Speedrun General, is awesome, so thanks, thanks to you guys. Um, well, I guess to Archie and Brittany and my crew, Ra, George and Aaron and whatnot, and Mum and uh, Chris and that, um, what a weekend, uh, hot weekend, and you guys handled it well. Um, to Asher and Josh, what a podium, eh? Something I've always dreamed of, um, obviously, to share it with me, Asher and Dad, but Josh is obviously part of our family too, so well done, boy. You drove well all weekend. Um, it's about time you start getting, getting rewards for your, for your uh, efforts, eh? so well done, boy. To Asher, back to back, the longest serving, 1NZ, boy, you're on. Well done. <laughs> um, I'll keep it. Last thing, thanks to Dad. Without him, myself and Asher wouldn't be here right now competing as we do. Um, and that man over there beside him with the big red bull hat on smiling, Brian Hartley. Without you, mate, these things are flipping unreal. We've got some power. We need more power. So get, get to work and get, get into it. And thanks to uh, Tos, uh, Tony and Advanced Journey for sponsoring another TSA. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Good work. OK, 2 and Z. Josh Prentice. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, Red, Annette, uh, Ams, all your committee, everyone involved. He's uh, had a struggle with the rain, but he's put it off one hell of a weekend. He's did everything he's good with the track, everything perfect, so thank yous. Uh, all the competitors made it hard racing, kept it honest. It was just awesome. Uh, my family, my kids, my dad. Uh, yeah, it's unreal. Everyone at home that supported me and helped me. Thank you. All my sponsors on my car. Without them, I can't do it. But there's one family that I've got to thank. And I wasn't going to be racing this year, but Pete, Asher, and Ethan made it possible gave me a car to race and they're the best cars in the country 
with Harley Race Engines, you can't get a better car. Uh, yeah, Sunreal, Ash, you're a legend, boy. And Eve, about time, brother, and it's so good. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Awesome, mate. Good work. And the final one, one in Z, Asher Ease. He can't give it to himself. This is his one, that one. Can I carry it? Hey, Just a big thanks to all the crowd that have stayed here for this. Um, Obviously it's a late night and uh, we appreciate your support because uh, we race for you guys. Um, big thanks to Fiona, the club, Huntley Speedway, everyone who's got an involvement in this whole deal. The reps, they cop it a bit. The refs, they cop it a bit. Thanks to them, they put up with us and it makes a great show at the end of the day. Uh, Pollock Cranes, they've put us up for the weekend at the yards. They sponsor this club, they do a great job. Just absolutely unbelievable for what they do for a small club and then oh, the future of Superstocks in Huntley, I guess. Um, Ames here does everything he can to promote this event like he did. It was two times in the making, three years to get here, but he's made it interesting for everyone. And that crowd uh, public uh, grid drawer today was probably the coolest thing for a little kid. So uh, thanks for drawing 12. It turns out it was the same grid I had last time at Rotorua, so it uh, worked out in my favour again. Big thanks to the crew, uh, the family, my partner, Michaela and little baby Harper. It's pretty big to be here and win this. Um, Pete, my old boy, he uh, puts off my shit at work. We built some pretty cool cars. We uh, managed to get some pretty good results. And then old Brian, he comes along and keeps us going with these great engines and these combos we can work together uh, you just can't beat it look at it right here look at the second tier just another great combination of cars and the top five in this first tier is Reese race cars if you can't beat them join them it's overdue cheers thank you mate appreciate it Well Red, well, Red, Huntley Speedway, we've finally done it. Red, I've spoken to you a lot over the last couple of weeks. You, had, you haven't had much sleep, so uh, big ups to all you guys. And, uh, yeah, spend a few days with all these boys in Hamilton. And as exactly what Ash just said, if you can't beat them, join them. Enjoy your guys' night. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. Wow, congratulations to Asha, to Josh, and to Ethan once again. We've had an amazing weekend of national racing. How, how was that, Gabe? Uh, it's, that was awesome. That's the best super stock racing I've seen in multiple years, like stream-wise. Being here live is absolutely awesome to be a part of, but at the end of the day, over 100 competitors came. They saw, but they could not conquer the 1NZ of Asheries. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal, the finish that they've got, the emotion that's over here right now. I mean, if we turn around, all seriousness, as soon as the cameras are gone, it's all hugs, dads are in there crying. I mean, they're so proud of their boys, it's ridiculous. We can't thank you enough for joining us. We hope that you've enjoyed the racing as much as Gabe and I have. That's from us, Pitts Media. We're going to sign out now. We'll see you next week. We're down in Christchurch, Gabe, for the uh, Superstock Stampede. No, the invita What are we doing? The Battle of the Stocks. Battle of the Stocks in Christchurch. Sorry guys, it's been a very long night. But listen, we're going to sign off. Everyone who's here, safe travels home. We'll see you again.